save or die outcasts where last we left the party we had completed our mission and now it's time to get our rewards i think we already did our level ups last session but there are more rewards to be given out or at there's least you know, more consequences. Neil, holy shit. but wait there's, there's more. more let's hear it there's more well first off um nicholas arrakis yes. sakara the great or want to be great shadow mage that's me you learn all sorts of stuff about Sigrid's shadow hand, about the plane of shadow, about magic and spells, and about that tower you're so desperately looking for. Oh, amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and after you learn about all of those things, then we're gonna go on to our next quest. So, uh, next quest, Scrow, where are wait, you? Wait, 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 hang on, hang on. But do I do I actually learn? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, see I, yeah, I, it's just fun. I see the thing in the, I see the, the spell list. The spell yes, list is great. Used read magic on all of the spells that were in yeah. there and all the word magical words and you get <clears throat> a sh uh, shit whack i think is the technical term of spells a shit load and i it, believe I, I think shit load is european shit whack is american to be honest i've well, never heard um, of a shit whack yeah i'm gonna be well, honest you're canadian so <laughs> oh no don't it. give me that <laughs> a shit whack does not sound good like no a shit no. load is what i've always heard i've got a shit load of spells here anyway I don't know anyway, if it's a what's the, How does a shit whack convert to a fuckload? <laughs> yeah, what's the Anyone difference? Got the conversion uh, table for that? It's yeah, I'm not sure it's 15 that. shit whacks to the fuckload. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't want You've any got... shit whacks. I want my shit untouched. <laughs> yeah, I want my shit not whacked. Yeah. I want my, <laughs> I want my wax. Good. Not bad. What? Can we move on from this? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Nicholas, I'm you get a bunch of spells. You get I'm shadow spells stuck. from first. <laughs> Yes, I see all the I see all the shadow spells. That's fantastic. Uh, I have two questions just on the spells. One is, I am okay. right in remembering that the the writings on the walls said that he attained the seventh level of magic, the seventh circle of magic. So there potentially is more secrets to be found in that regard, or maybe he keeps those ones to himself. But um, I'm also interested in: is there anything about the mirror, the tower? The plane itself, like, is this something you can send me? Yeah, on? when you bring the mirror back to the place in the temple, um, it mm -hmm. seems not in the temple in the the tomb. It seems to be working there. So, okay, it, so but it takes it some might time be location to recalibrate dependent. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it, yeah, it does take some time to recalibrate. Also, these spells that are spells that you can read, but you must learn them to be able to copy them into your spell book. So you can revisit the tomb anytime you want to pick up one of these new spells. But if you were just to hand transcribe them into a piece of paper and walk away and then try to learn it off that, it wouldn't work. You have to read the actual stuff that was written with read and write wait. magic. So wait, so I return so to the temple to read uh, to the tomb so, to read to learn the spells. To learn them. So how long have yeah. I been doing this then? Not that long. Uh, we were gonna hand wave some time and say maybe a month had passed and you spent okay. another two weeks just like learning these things and writing everything down. But then like, then. you've got the shop you were supposed to get back to. There's a bunch of stuff to decipher. You could easily spend the rest of your life studying this tomb, uh, but you got like job and you got life and there's things oh, happening. Fine, so yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, but is there anything specific about the... Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Is there anything specific about the tower or the... Oh, oh baby. Plane? Oh, yeah, what do you want to know about first? Well, is there a tower? There's a tower, sweetheart. No, it's, 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 it's the you're, same tower. <laughs> you're awfully romantic today, Neil. Sorry. Um, what is the, what, where is where is the tower? Is the tower in your pants? It's, it's getting there, depends on the answer. The tower is found in the north of the swamp, where the swamp is thinnest. <sighs> Okay. Oh shit! Wait, fuck off, Neil! No! Oh my god! Wait, we oh, have wait. this. Didn't we? There's didn't we, more. Didn't we have this theory? Yeah, we I did. This tower. Yeah. Yeah. We did have this. How theory. many towers could be in a fucking swamp? You know? Yeah, but August Tower is not in the north of the swamp, is it? Is it's, it? Neil? Does it? Does it not go beyond thin. that? The swamp? It is where it's thin. Yeah. I guess that's what it means. You also learn that the tower far predates Sigrid's Shadow Hand, right? This has been around for yeah. an age yeah. and an age no, and yeah, age I and age. Yeah, I knew that, yeah. Um, but apparently the tower is attuned to its residents, its masters. There seems to be some way of, like, 
connecting with the tower based on casting spells into a certain place within the tower the that's lines. not very well defined. Um, and then depending on the strength of the magic cast into the tower, the tower and the land surrounding it will modify and change. At low levels, um, you know, with only entry level spells, the, the tower has some abilities and some functions and some defenses. And the more magic the tower actively receives, the greater its defenses go on and improve. Oh. Um, <clears throat> the notes here are not complete. Um, it looks like, judging by the way they're written, that the, how should we say this? Um, there's a passage that says, I don't want to reveal all of the secrets of the tower in case one of my followers is in charge of it and someone else stumbles across this. I wouldn't want to reveal mm. um, its weaknesses, but it then does go on to describe a couple of broad speaking abilities. Like the tower has mirrors in it that appear uh, at the second circle. And these mirrors can act as crystal balls with limited ranges, depending on the strength of the tower at that given point. Um, it also says that the tower's walls will improve and become, at um, the very beginning, they're kind of crappy and crumbly, but by the time you're using um, third circle spells, the walls of the tower are slick enough that they can't be climbed. And by the time you're using six level spells, the whole tower is shrouded in forbiddance and teleportation and plane shifting can't even bring you there. Uh, you know, so, the password and everything. Uh, based on what I've read here, am I <clears> thinking <throat> that this is Autumn's Tower or not? Because I don't remember anything like that around Autumn's Tower. Well, in the north where it's thinnest, Autumn's Tower, if we look at the map, is sort of in the north. It's really more in the west. Yeah, but it is this, definitely ooh. near the thin point. This so... whole, like, black cloud, that's the swamp, right? Yeah. So it could be up, up here, maybe, as well. That's true. Um, also, the swamp does extend out to sort of this line here. The areas that are clouded are the areas that are unexplored, and no one's quite sure what the terrain mm -hmm. looks like. But you can find maps where it shows that this over here is sort of, you know swampy but more or less passable on ground like you can walk through this area without any trouble but you get to the cloudy areas and this is the like nigh impossible to navigate or no one's come back from it um so Wait, can you point out autumn's tower one more time yeah it's like over here yeah yeah okay. it's probably not that right i guess not yeah well, that's cool to know all right it's good to know that there's uh, more to explore is that and this sorry i know i'm taking a lot of time this stuff about the shadow plane as well yes actually i think i probably already told you most of the things about the shadow plane um we talked about this already it has a low edge energy density and it's a poor source of magic it's like um, a lasagna you... that's what i remember <laughs> i think so yeah. Um, there are resources that, in theory, could be extracted from there, but it's a pretty fruitless and overly expensive endeavor. Like, you would never go to the Shadow Plane to mine iron. It's just way easier to mine it on the yeah. Prime Material Plane. It sounds like the, like the Shadow... Wouldn't be very good. It sounds like the Shadow Plane's, like, a good place. Like, if you wanted to, like, trance, like, go between lands in, like, an easy fashion, like, traveling from, like, Swampside to Jaden in the Shadow Plane sounds like it'd be a lot easier because there's not, like, random fucking monsters. If you had a way to be able to pass, yeah, easily. Yeah, right. It's also it's good for like hiding things. Hard. Right? Yeah, we mm -hmm. could go put a treasure chest in the shadow plane. Yeah. How the fuck are they ever gonna get it? You know. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um. And it's good for like yeah. summoning things from right. Like you, there's loads of spells that allow you to summon monsters from the shadow plane or summon items made of shadow. Mm. Yes, like there. Replications of things. And the shadow plane is a, well. a combination of the four elemental planes and it also has a little bit of all the other planes touching it and so it has all the components that you need to build stuff with magic if you want to like you know pull something from the fire plane you're going to be pulling something that's pretty fiery uh, you're not going to be able to necessarily pull like a wall a door made of fire it would just be like fire and it would set your entire building on fire the shadow plane has all the different elements mixed into it so you can get complex objects that are like semi-real that have multiple facets so you can like summon a shadow troll because you have air water fire earth and a little bit of life and a little bit of you know 
all the other things hanging out there. Yeah, cool. Um, um, mm-hmm. All right, I'll, uh, we think we can move on. Depending on how much time we're skipping, now that I've got all these spells, could I have had a chance to learn a few of them? Yeah. As well? Um, yeah. And there's three I that I would so. try and learn, three of the level two ones. Yeah, you can have spent six days doing that. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so I'll roll my E100. Which, a- which a- a- spells? Lower. Yeah, so uh, Raven Feeblement, Scare, and Dancing Shadows. So Raven so Feeblement. first. Yeah, Enfeeblement first. Classic. <laughs> Scare is good. Scare is the one I think you want. Scare, yeah. Okay. And Dancing Shadows. Mm. Okay, nice. cool. All right, move on. I'll add them in. Uh, I will spend some time fighting with Renatus, like seeing, I guess, what the Shadow Dagger does. Um, do we get anything else from it? Nope, just the things oh. I gave you at the end of last week. The blending into shadows part. Can yes. I move while I'm blended into shadows? No. Do I have to remain um, stationary? You have to remain stationary. And it right. takes an hour to be that? Awesome. Yeah, it takes an hour to blend into Half an hour? fully to blend into shadows. Okay, this is the shittiest it's a good, it's a good, I've ever seen. In my it's life. a good assassination yeah, it's weapon. It's good. But the plus two is amazing. The, plus two, and it does one d eight damage, and it's a dagger. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Okay. It's massive. Oh, it's 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 an insane. Yeah, so it's weapon. trash. It's complete trash, and you should just throw it back into the swamp. Not even a it. plus five that gives you blame. Absolutely not, because I'm betting in the shadow plane this weapon fucking slaps. Hey, how about we fucking sell this thing? Buy a big ass trough for Growl. How about that? <laughs> if it was a magical Huge trough ass. and you could wield yeah. it, maybe. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> maybe. Well, coming up next, does anyone have a story or an adventure that they wanted their characters to get uh, involved in? Did anyone have any self directed plot lines? I'm assuming no. Uh, honestly, if we if we got more info on this tower, I feel like. Would, would Arrakis just like stop here? No, I thought we agreed at the end of the last episode yeah, that we, we were going to look into the. You would, I think, Grau said he wanted to find the elves and was curious and speaking yeah. to an elf. And I think Arrakis feels like you guys have, especially if you helped guard the tomb whilst I was studying, that I kind of owe it to you to help you, uh, you know, each do your thing as well. Yeah, so I, he's, I. So he's on board. Uh, I'm going back to my shop in Swampside anyway, which is where we saw the, the fireflies. So I, I think we probably are in Swampside and can. Mm-hmm. Go from I wanted there. to go and do Grouse stuff as well. I wanted to go see what the elves are up to. Maybe one of them know what's going on with my family in the far north. So mm-hmm. I think that's the best place to go. Yeah, and the elves might even know where this tower is or have an idea. Yep. And so. then the other thing that's kind of hanging over our heads is needing to go see Baron... What's his name? In uh, Roselock, yeah. In Sackmore. Roselock, uh, Sackmore. Sackmore. Sackmore, oh, true. Yeah. We have a lot of loose threads right yeah, now. Yeah, we need to go see Sackmore, I think, first, and then... No, uh, really? Well, technically, we've not found the tower yet, so... Should we RP this, true. maybe? Sure! Yeah. Why don't we be hanging out in Swampside one day after closing up shop? Um, the party can be... I've been back in Swampside for about a week. Um, and everyone's meeting up at the little tavern there. Arrakis, have we... Uh, stuff in his shit. Yes, have man. we received news of Sackmore? Has he responded to our letters? <clears throat> I've not seen anything in the, in the post yet or by messenger from Sackmore. But, you know, he was watching us down there. So I think he... The, sorry... Neil, did I ever see a goblin spying on us again when I was down there for a long time? No. Yeah, well, we never saw those goblins again, so maybe he's just satisfied that we were down there in the tomb looking into it, but uh, I'm sure he'll come looking for us sooner or later if we don't check in. Yeah, I don't know. Are we going to tell him everything that we learned? No. I don't know. I don't see the reason to, really. We... I don't think he found that chamber. There's no way he found that chamber. He would have found those items and he wouldn't have needed our quote unquote help uh, to go there. But I do think it's dangerous if he discovers that we did find something and didn't tell him. 
I think that will automatically make him a very scary enemy. So we need to kind of, as we agreed, to keep this to ourselves. Although there are at least two other people who live nearby that did see potentially the entrance to the deeper chamber, the midwife. Yeah, but Sackmore's in a whole different country from here. Unless they purposely go out of their way to tell someone, I well, would like to hope it won't get back to him. But you're right. It's wise to be cautious. Do we go visit him or do we just ignore him? That's the real question. Well, we started working with him for a reason, right? He was our only hope. true. Send now we don't letter. need him. We. I could just say we're letter. looking for the tower. We're looking for the tower, and we think that it may be in the unexplored section north of the swamp or something like that. Mm. Easy enough. And uh, we'll do some initial reconnaissance and get back to him. Very well. Uh, Ren will take out his journal and pen and write out this note uh, and find a I, messenger. Per perhaps it's best for me to write it. I'd say oh, okay. before you start writing it. Because it was me that was speaking to him. So I'll write this letter from Sakara saying that um, I spoke to the boy, uh, what was his name? Hallis, Shadowhand in Wickish. Followed his directions to the tomb, dispatched some. Uh, what are they called? Bullywugs. Mm -hmm. Um. Looked into the writings on the walls, did some research, may have deciphered some clues leading to location of the tower, unexplored area in the north of the swamp. We'll do some initial reconnaissance and report back. Signed Sakara. And I'll send that, like, you know, on a horseback messenger, of how much that's going to okay. cost now. Um, we'll just fold it into your funds. Yeah. Let's not worry about it. Since we spent right. a month, should we have to pay a month's funds? I was going to say that... Well, let's finish this conversation, and then we'll talk about money. Rao is fascinated by the fact that you have just spoken words and then brought them onto paper and are able to transport them mm. for hundreds of miles. Um, his eyes are very wide at the fact, like, what you're doing. He's maybe never seen anyone write something before, uh, at least not like this. Um, but he's not going to say anything, he's just going to look at you with very wide eyes. Easy. I believe that kind of magic is possible, but it's it's difficult in nature. Um, the idea of a, a concept uh, is actually more complicated and difficult to convey magically than you might imagine. And so a message, whilst you might, when you write it on paper, it just seems like some markings. When it's translated into the magic, it's something quite... Uh, more impressive indeed, and requires a great wizard to to grasp such a concept in magical terms and send it across the plane. You know, it'd be cool if you could get a piece of someone's shadow, and then you could write them a letter, and then use that to send it across the shadow plane to them, and that's how I'd find them. Maybe that you should make cool. a spell like that. Yeah, August, that's good thinking. I'll uh, I'll consider that. I think I've heard of uh, of druids. I say lower in my voice, using. Um, small animals to send messages across great distances. Oh, I, tweets, I could, yes. I could do that, but but the person I'm sending some message to would have to understand the animal. Mm, yes, unless maybe you could tie a note. Like I've just oh. done, you could write a note like this, or and then you could send. Well, I couldn't write the note. But... Together, perhaps, we could put our minds together, Grau. Yes. How, what's Grau's intelligence? Uh, seven. He could learn to read and write, Neil. Give him Probably. a time. Yeah. <laughs> but we like already a... did the we already did the arc of Archie learning to read and write. In I, I think so. I think right. Well, we had some arc where some other character is learning to yeah, read and we write. Did that, yeah. We're just yep. recycling <laughs> plot yeah. points at this yeah, point. Content. It's all recycled, my friend. Uh. Oh, you have the spell. Oh, you do. Well, Grau doesn't really know what spells he has. Um, he just kind of does them. Um, da -da, if the creature is within the range, the priest using some type of food, the animal, the animal will come. The animal is out of saving throw versus spell. Saving throw has failed. The animal advances towards the priest and awaits the bidding. The priest can communicate with the animal in a crude fashion, telling it to go to a certain place, but directions must be simple. 
spellcaster can attach a small item or note to the animal if so instructed. The animal will then wait at that location until the duration of the spell expires. Okay. That's cool. Oh. Did you tell us about that or no? Um, yeah, Grau is going to be like, um, I, I think, I think I could do this. I think I could tell one of my, like a rabbit or a, or a bird to, to carry something for me like that. Yeah. Well, that would be useful. Well, let's use this then instead of sending a messenger and wasting our money. Well, Why not? It's... How long is the duration of the spell? Hold on. One day per level. How far? If it's a bird, it, it should be fine. Three days, yeah. Uh, like four days, right? Four days. Four. It's level four. Yeah. Four, four day. days to fly 100 miles? Neil, is this possible? Uh, four days to fly 100 miles? Well, to get to Sakmo. Yeah, a bird could get that distance in four days. Um, do you... let's, uh, before we do this, let's consider the implications because there's two that I see. Oh, it's a druid spell, right? It might also be a cleric spell, but I'm not a cleric, so it's two things. It's one, it's somewhat intimidating, perhaps, and it's a flex, but it's also maybe uh, you know a reason to distrust or maybe arouse suspicion. If he thinks it might be a druid thing, but, I, but I, on balance, I think it's probably worth it. If what if someone finds the bird with a note somewhere, and then they know that a druid sent it? The thing is, some people do train certain types of birds to send notes. It doesn't mm. necessarily have to be magic. <laughs> so I think we yeah. could get away with it. And also, you know, Sakmo doesn't know who I am. He doesn't know how strong we are. If he thinks we have a divine caster with us as well, this could be a I good think, power play. Yeah, betraying us. Okay, I can, I can try it. I'm sure you'll do great, Grau. All right. So, so I guess we're going. Are we going out finding finding a bird, a suitable suitable creature? Yeah, I guess I roll up the I roll up the note and I'll tie like a little piece of string around it and hand it to you, um, so you can give it to the bird. You'll probably need to like tie it around its foot. Tie it around its foot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'll go with you and to watch you find one, basically. What do we um, what do we want to do about the the prisoners in Swampside? Do we want to recruit them? They should be getting out soon, right, Neil? Uh, we're gonna be picking back up on July first. The prisoners that you took at the beginning of this quest, I have forgotten how long their sentence was. Do you remember? Oh, no. Don't remember. I'm afraid. Uh, their crimes were banditry and robbery, right? Correct. Yeah, they're in for more than three months for that. Yeah. How long are they in? Because we need to make it back by the time they're coming out. You should leave like a note for them, maybe. Is it wise to recruit I mean, men? You just visit them at prison if you want. That we yeah. incarcerated? That's a. These men may uh, not be very forgiving. I gave them money, and I sent them on their way pretty well. I think that. There was at least three of them who uh, definitely wanted to change their ways and saw eye to eye, you know? I admire your optimism, August, to think that men can change. But in my experience, it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. So are you men a murderer grow, forever now? Not change. Am I a what? August? Are you a murderer forever now? I will always be a murderer, yeah. I'll leave it there. They've got... Two years. Oh fuck! Okay, there you go. Okay. They're in for a while. Cool. Um. Yeah. So, Grau, do you? What happens when you cast the spell? So. Yeah. So. Ba -ba -ba -ba. We need like food to get the animal towards us. Lure it. Mm -hmm. It'd be easy Some to find. Scraps, yeah. yeah. The bird should be easy enough to find, but the bird has to make a saving throw. Yeah, that's real easy. Once you write the letter, you can go get some bird seed, just regular seeds actually, um, and catch yourself a little bird who fails at saving throw with a little piece of string. You can tie a little note to its ankle, and then you impart upon the bird a desire to head to Roselock. Roselock Keep, yeah. Did you ever go inside the keep yourself, Rao? 
Yes. He actually did. Um, I was there with, with Arrakis in, in orc form. I was his bodyguard or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Then don't worry about it. There's just going to be a bird that shows up and lands with the message. All is well. Problem solved. Next quest. Amazing. <laughs> All right, so we're going to search in the swamp? Yeah, so, well, hang on. Let's 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 all sit down and think about our objective here. Gra, you said you wanted to speak to an elf? I just think, ever since we met Forrest, I think there's probably more people who are elves, maybe, that know where I'm from. I agree. And I know that we didn't help them, but the Fireflies were active in this town. There has to be someone here who still sympathizes with them, who may know a direction that we could travel into the swamp to look for them. I also want to maybe know more about Autumn and if we can trust her, and maybe that would be a good place to find out. Yeah, the Fireflies had a lot to say about Autumn, didn't they? Maybe if we can find out the truth about Autumn, then we can decide how best to approach her. I agree, she's been a good ally so far. I think it would be prudent to start our search by investigating the town. Um, when was the last? When were the last elves sighted nearby? Um, mm-hmm. What rumors of the local branches of the Firefly are about? Um, are there any Firefly criminals in chains at the moment? Um, which direction did the Fireflies escape to when they jailbroke? I believe there was a jailbreak at some point. Yeah. Based on your testimony, some firefly, a firefly was rounded up, captured, and hauled back to Valebrook for questioning, uh, only to be broken out of jail shortly thereafter. It was a, what do you call it, like um, egg on the face of both the kingdom and of the empire. And uh, in the Hun, in the, the, the following weeks and months, the Empire <clears throat> squeezed down on all the people, looking for any information regarding fireflies. Door-to-door searches were conducted, citizens were interviewed in every town, um, people who looked like they might be holding out were brought in for further questioning and then later released and returned with not much to say about their time. Um, the fireflies are deeply wanted. And Mistress Magistrate Zara is has not been holding back on trying to get information about them. Do you think you have an approach that might be better than what the Empire has been able to do? Mm, that's a hard question to answer. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would People be something. On the street, Probably not so much information to, to give that hasn't already been picked up by other people looking for them. If I think quickly, then... Mm-hmm. Well, the obvious thing that the Empire would have done is anyone who was as- associated with Forrest would have been investigated, mm-hmm. and anyone who was likely to be cracked for information would have been taken out of the town already by the Fireflies. So... I think mm. I think it might be tough for us to find information if they've already been combing hard. Anyone who was looking for information on the Fireflies would be regarded with pretty hard suspicion from pretty much everyone because of the crackdown. I think you're right there. Um, are there... I was just going to ask, are there any elves like in the nearby forest that we know of? Oh, no. Okay, no, no, they're no, all no. fucking dead. Uh, well, once upon a time, the, the north edge of the swamp far northeast edge of the swamp boarded elven territory uh but you know big war most of the forest burn actually the oldest part of the forest burned down and destroyed um so the elves are are wildly displaced and have fled to some other area or they're all dead no one really knows do yeah, they have a base not, we're probably Dude. not the only people trying to find these guys huh i am um, it might be like on the run living in caves living out of trees just eaten with no actual home base or they might have dozens of home bases scattered all over the place or maybe they have a super ultra mega secret base hidden somewhere but um, how you would find this i don't know and this conversation with you i think is represented by a back and forth across the table and Arrakis is sitting there and considering what people are saying 
and he's looking at he's looking at Growl and thinking about Forest, and then eventually speaks up and says, uh, "Growl, you remembered Forest. You remembered Forest, but uh, not until you saw him, right?" Yeah, that's right. If uh, you remember him and he was working in this town, and you let's make an assumption that you had something to do with him and the Fireflies, is there maybe yeah. a chance that uh, if we were to travel north into the swamp, that maybe you might remember the way? I, I, I could try. I, I don't know. I've never gone somewhere and just... Meeting Forrest was the, the first time something like this happened. Maybe but, you can uh, tap into that feeling as we, uh, uh -huh. if we walk there, try and sort of harness it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a big forest. Where do you want to start? Um, that's a good question. Right, well, like well. It, it covers tens of thousands of square miles. But there has to Maybe. be, if, if Forrest was in Swampside, you've got to imagine that there was a path into Swampside. And the mm. forest has got to be relatively less dense near the near the town. <laughs> the fact that this guy's name is also Forrest is getting me just, like, confusing. So, I know that this is a long stretch, but it, it feels like maybe it could work. If we've got better ideas, then definitely let's pursue them. But we could just kind of head north outside of Swampside. Well, I think, you know, step one of our adventure here should be to assess the local area right um there might be signs and information nearby we shouldn't i don't think i don't think it's wise for us to just take a direction and go into the swamp um so i would i would suggest we search you know a couple of miles in every direction just see if we find anything i agree well i have some things to catch up with in the shop um maybe a few days the three of you could you know, make a perimeter around the town, see if uh, you find anything. Maybe Gry will pick up some inklings in a certain direction or other. Yeah, sounds like a good move. Um, shall we split up or yes. shall we stick together? I think the three of you maybe go together and I'll I'll be here if you need me. But I have some okay. things to, uh, to catch up on. This is a great point to talk about some of the other things that have been happening during the downtime. Um, first off, the party was gone for almost two months on this last adventure, by my notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about uh, just around two months-ish. Um, and in that time, Arrakis, you didn't have anyone to mind your shop. You did tell the neighbor that if someone was coming by that they should help you out, but yeah. there's a limit that could be done. Yes, and a lot of, of things are still in the special ordering phase since you're building your establishment. And worst of all, while you were gone, your shop was burgled. And oh my God. it was just left abandoned for a couple of months. People broke in, stole some things here and there. You've been set back a little bit. That's the first problem. The second problem, Jamie, my good friend. Remember this map? Remember this uh, fire and they sided with the empire during the invasion? And the royalists in this blue area who are like, no, you know, the kingdom's doing everything right. It's holding everyone together. We don't want to be ruled by the empire. Long live the king. And this sort of teal-ish area over here is the people who are like, the imperialists are traitors. The royalists are sucking up to the empire. We're unhappy with everything. And we're pissed, right? Remember these three different structures. Totally remember, remember these guys. Absolutely. And remember those... uh. Those people that got jailed that you found on the road with the taxes and how they were, um, they were what do you miffed. Call the miffed, the miffed people who were, uh, had attacked the tax collecting imperialists, right? Yep. I well, remember that. Well, you know, Swampside is the big city belonging to the loosely confederated miffed people of the area. And you, before our last adventure, had been working with the Lord in Swampside. He'd like brought you in to do parties and to do events as like an entertainer with the ferret and your sleight of hand and your personality. A um, couple weeks after you come back, you find that, you know, the job stopped coming. The Lord of the area stops asking you for work. And all of your, you know, regularly or at least semi-steady paid income 
just dried up overnight. Mm. Yeah. So we've got, oh, look. We've got it's some the small consequences financial. of our actions. <laughs> Corruption. Um, unlucky. Small problems. Yeah. Now, the party, you've got skills, right? There's healing. There's fighting. There's thievery. There's selling magic uh, components and that sort of stuff. So the party can limp along. And we're going to say that you together make about as much as it costs to live in the remaining time between the end of the session and today. You're, you're not really getting ahead. Any money that you might be making ahead, you kind of have to store away in case of a rainy day because it's been kind of tough going. Now that we're in the summer and everything's so hot all the time and the days are so long, you find yourself you know, maybe spending a little bit more. So our finances are kind of tight. I think between the whole party, there's maybe 20 gold left. Yep. Well, Arrakis, did you end up taking that 500 silver? You did, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yeah. Okay, Arrakis, who stole the tax money and didn't get caught, is the only one with money remaining. So I should take off oh, my yeah. 15 gold and 135 silver? Oh, no, no. If you have that on your sheet, then you keep it. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, you, you have cash then. Well, maybe I invest a little bit to... So I've just got my herbalism proficiency. If I'm going to take yeah. a few days here, I'd like to... Like, repair the shop, get the door repaired, or whatever. Yeah, um, I've assumed that you know. we've done basic repairs on the shop and that the party has been back in town for three weeks. And now you're sort of, you've rebuilt the shop to where it needs to be. You've, you've realized that this other work isn't coming in. You've paid for the full month of July. We're starting on July 1st, yeah. which is also Martha's Day, which is also Mother's Day um, and the new moon. I will... Um... As part of my herbalism training, I think I've probably got like a small book on different mm -hmm. herbs, and it's got some room at the back for, for uh, di diagrams. I'll draw them some pictures of like nearby kind of herbs that we might want to get for sale in the shop and or for using in my proficiency. So I'm going to give them like a few pictures, okay. refer them to a few pages in the book. So hopefully they can find some stuff. And if I if there's any components that I can buy from the town, like iron filings um you know blast shards things like that i'll i'll start stocking back up on things like that but obviously i'm not going to be able to get anything too right magical right um, i already says some shit to say as we well, go around and look oh wait just before that one small piece of context and then you can you can say all your shit uh in the party there's enough money to probably supply you for two more months of adventuring um, you, you have already paid for July, you have enough money for August, and if you are tight with your budget, you probably have enough money for September as well. So I want to let everyone know that money is scarce, but if you are frugal, you have you know three months before you need to make 50 gold to keep living, unless Jamie wanted to buy those dogs, in which case that's a different conversation. I think and That was the whole I... point. We were buying the dogs and he was training them for this downtime, right? Yeah. Yeah, I thought that's what he was doing, yeah. So we can so. Yes. pay the money. Two dogs. How much are they? And ten gold each. Uh, the I'll, I can buy. I'll buy your dogs for you. <laughs> do you like dogs? <laughs> I do like dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Periwinkle, blue like, bay. Uh, I, I do like love. I do love a good dog. Uh, yeah. Right. They they come in three levels. Um, they're all the same stat block, but their training is different. Hunting dogs can help you hunt. Uh, war dogs, great for killing things. Guard dogs, great for killing things. And they have a sense of like holding locations rather than just murdering. Uh, the guard dogs are the most expensive at 25. War dogs are 20 gold each and huntings are 17. Personally, I think the hunting is, I'm sorry, the war dog is the right spot. Um, is oh, you yeah. all the attack capacity need? Neil has all yeah, the money. I mean, I've got maybe, I've got like 50 gold I can give you, but that's part of when Neil said we've got two months worth of adventuring left. That's part of it. So yeah, but if you pay, if you buy two war dogs, then you just have two months of adventure. Yeah, I think we can we can afford two war dogs. All right, I don't, okay. think, we can, I don't think we can afford two hunting dogs. We, we, we get uh, we get two war dogs. Okay, excellent. I'm gonna, is it two hundred silver now? Two hundred silver for oh, each shit. one. So four hundred. I just total. realized I can each talk one. to the dogs. Yeah. Yes, you can. That's so sick. Um, Jamie, I would like you to roll me some HP, and then Mr. Mooton had things he wanted to say, and I interrupted him, and then we got sidetracked. All so right. Back. Uh, 2d8 plus 2 for the HP on each of your dogs. All right, this one is for... Wait, shouldn't he get, like, a... Shouldn't he be able to buy, like, a fucking dog that doesn't look like a... 
the runt, you know? I, I'm, a, I'm a dice roller. I want to do it. All right, roll it. All right. Uh, this is for, right, dog name. What are Cheeto. we going to call him? <laughs> what did you call him? Cheeto. Cheeto. This is for Cheeto. Nice. 11. Nice. That's pretty good. Hell yeah. That's for Cheeto. Uh, and then this is for... Nacho. Nacho. Dorito. Boom. No. 11 and 9. Those are... Oh, they're average rolls. Yeah. They're not bad. They're like not good. Dags. They're not bad. They're not great. They're regular dags. You like dags? Ones. <laughs> One of them's a regular dag. The other one's slightly less. Uh, yeah, August has some shit to say, but since you bought them the dogs, it's going to be better. Um, as we're out looking for herbs and looking for this magical forest entrance that the party wants to stumble upon somehow, um, August is going to kind of bring up the fact that, you know, I kind of feel like uh, Sakara, aka Arrakis, is kind of fucking lazy. I feel like every time that we're going around, he's just ordering us around to go do things. Now he's giving us a fucking shopping list of herbs to go and find him. I'm glad that he bought you the dogs, but come on now. He should be out here with us looking. Well, why don't you have that conversation with him? I don't understand why. He... If you don't like his leadership, why don't you take charge? He's a prima donna, a fucking wizard, you know. Just Put him in his place. me off. All right. Thank you. Handle it. Look, I'll, I'll, I agree I'll with you. I'll talk to him about it. I won't be confrontational. I'll talk to him about it. it, it it's, yeah. Here's the thing. He feels like this is an area where he has expertise. So, of course, he's going to take leadership. I could step in and try to take leadership. But I realize that I need to be a supporting car. I need to be your support. You guys are never going to grow if I'm always telling you what to do. I have to let you make mistakes. And knowing I when to, to let leader. Some, knowing when to let someone else lead and when to try and lead is an important lesson for you to learn. And I think it would be good to talk to Sakara about this. I agree. I mean I don't I don't need to be the leader right now. I just I don't want to be out here and being his lackey. You know, for this last quest, we didn't even get anything. Uh, did he even give you the dagger? No, he didn't. He bought me the dogs, and, uh... Well, what do you fucking do? I could have bought you some dogs, too. Could have bought you a horse. Yeah, that's my problem, you see? And you know what? I'll ta- I'm will going to talk to him about it. Thank you. Sure. Right. Would, would you want me to come with you, and I'll, I'll help? Or do you want to take it on yourself? I don't is this know. your what own do you battle? Think? What do you think, Grau? You think Arrakis is a little fucking lazy? He hasn't even bought you a trough, Grau. He does, he does so much. What does he do? He's a wizard. He does magic all the time. You do magic spend as so well. much time reading and writing. And that's the problem. He's sitting on his ass. He's sitting on his ass. Yeah, I'm going to say something. I don't see you guys working every day. I was out there every day guarding the temple. What do you mean? I was working 12-hour shifts at a bare minimum to make sure bullywugs weren't coming to kill us, to make sure that... Uh, goblins weren't coming to ravage us. All he did was sit inside and take some fucking notes. Yeah. And now he has us out here looking for, I don't know, stupid herbs? There is well, something to be said for leading by example. But instead, he's leading <laughs> by hypocrisy. I'll start <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I was going to start laughing, but he has no idea what that means. <laughs> I'll handle it. I'll, I'll talk to him. Gra's gonna think. Maybe he is really. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, later that day, you know, you guys have done your rounds and you come back to the to the well, shop. Can we do a roll to see if we got any cool herbs? Oh yeah, true. Uh, let's see, do it on you know a larger oh, time end. scale than day Perfect. by day. Okay. So the little bell goes. Arrakis is like making notes or whatever at a desk. He looks over his shoulder to see August coming in with a little basket. He carries on. Going, so. I'll give I give like I give like Renatus a look and I'm just like this is the shit I'm talking about. I'll say Yeah, Grau is now I'm, also raising an eyebrow. <laughs> I like I'll give you the hand motion that says like go get him. Go deal with him. Figure it Marcus, out. What did you do all day? Uh hang on a minute. I just carry some writing what he was doing. <laughs> and apparently he goes, ah, perfect, and puts the quill down and turns around and says Sorry, August. What did you ask me? What the fuck did you do today? 
well, I've been getting the shop back to, um, you know, I've been overseeing the repairs. I've been uh, taking inventory. I bought some iron filings. Well, I got Derek to go and get those, but... Um, yeah, you know, I've just been getting things ready for us. And also, I've been thinking about how I can be making some of uh, some healing poultices for you and the and the boys when we're out on the field. I just, I feel like we're, you know, I'm busting my ass out here, walking around for this magical fucking entrance you want me to find, uh, looking for your herbs, and now you ask me to go and get shit from the kettle? For the kettle? I, I just, I feel like you're lazy, Arrakis. No, I, I can see what, I do see what you mean. Um... I think the difference is that we're playing to our strengths here, so obviously, like, you're much stronger than I am. You know, you could walk a lot further than me. Your eyes look really sharp there, so you're playing to your strengths, you know, you're walking around looking for the herbs. And I'm playing to my strengths, which is, you know, obviously, I'm very wise, intelligent, I understand the business. So I'm thinking about kind of the strategy. High level, you know, the, the top I'm not down. worried about the business here. I'm worried about you not putting in enough effort. If you want me to keep following you, then I'm going to need to see some leadership where you're actually taking action. You know, if I was inside all day making notes and writing, which I can do, by the way, I have royal education, oh, then I, I would also yes. be outside helping when people need to guard. You know, you never once came and asked if you, if you want to take over a shift, you know? I stop and I think for a minute. Like, do you know, you, you raise a very good point, August. You're right. I've taken you for granted these these last few weeks, son. I'm sorry about that. Thank you, Arrakis. Now go get tell some water what, for the kettle. I tell you what, I'll make the tea. No, you're right. I'll make the tea. Yeah, give me the herbs. I take the herbs. I'll go and make I'll the tea. I'll hand you the basket and I'll sit down in your chair. And I'm going to uh, check over your writings. What, what have you been doing? Um... There is an inventory, but the inventory is very small. It says uh, <laughs> iron filings. It says empty jars. And there's like seven of them. And there's another line that says six smashed jars. <laughs> uh, glass shards, question mark. As you leave, I'll you know show this to Ren. Look, look, this is what he's been doing all day. This is what he told me not to speak for. It, he just, this guy's lazy, but I'm going to give him a chance, Renatus. Yeah, Ren, Ren will put... I'll put my hand on your shoulder and I'll say, you did good. Uh, you confronted him without escalating it. And, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of glance down the list and I'm like, where did he learn to write? Jesus Christ. Is this his handwriting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take the... Bless Nadine the... is safest from this handwriting. <laughs> I'll like take the two minutes that it take to redo this list, and I'll go to the next page, and I'll redo it in what I think is good handwriting. Can I give you a dex check for that, Neil? Yeah, absolutely. Or would that um, be an etiquette check? I think it would be. You'd be a lit. No, it'd be a dex check. Yeah, you'd yeah, have to be literacy. Reading and writing and... check, no. Could be that. Reading and writing is based on int, and the smarter mm. person doesn't necessarily have the better handwriting. Hmm. If you have the reading and writing proficiency, you can make a dex check to produce something nice. That makes sense. Beautiful. And that's a great scrawl that you've done there. Well done. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We need a new proficiency. We need the writing proficiency. Where it just there is, is a calligraphy nice. proficiency. Oh, good. It's already there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get that one day. I'm into the shop with a bucket of water. I'll have to boil. Mm -hmm. I pour everyone's here out of a little kettle, and it's, uh, it's nice. Place it down on the table. I've got. I open up a tin of biscuits as well that I've bought from the nearby shop. So you got tea and biscuits. It's very nice, very wholesome. Um, uh, ah, yeah, yes, and I, Mr. Arrakis, with these biscuits, you are spoiling us. Indeed. Um, how did your searching go? Herbs aside, did you growl? Did you find anything? Did you remember anything? It doesn't seem so, Neil. Did we? Um, let's. I've got my list of things that you would be looking for here. We're looking for things in the field search category. Yeah, we're gonna just roll some of our saver die dice over here. Uh, no, sorry, it's a one. Bad day. You walk got in the it. swamp, you get water in your boots, you have to peel leeches off your legs, and you didn't even get shit today. That was an easy decision. Thank you, saver die dice. 
this. Okay. One D ten for where the biggest leech was. <clears throat> Hold on. Oh, roll it. Oh, is that the neck? That's fine. That's the right leg. Okay. Um, fat leech on my uh, right leg. I can carve it off with a with a dagger. It's a shame <laughs> that you didn't find anything. Um, maybe perhaps tomorrow I should go with you. I would like. Maybe so. your keen eyes would be useful. Yes, I think so. Ren um, will kind of like <clears throat> stretch, and like you'll hear like the cracking of his like old fascia and bones, and he'll be like, "Oh yes, well, I mean, we shouldn't leave the shop unattended." <laughs> and he'll, uh, oh, absolutely he'll, like, sit not. Back, <laughs> he'll sit back in his chair, and his legs will go up on the table. <laughs> the thumb, the thumb, so. You know, my old bones. <laughs> Rakis really is funny. smiling at Garp at uh, August. But he sort of side eyes um, Ren as he sort of leans back, realizing <laughs> that he's lost his comfy position. <laughs> yes, Uncle, please stay here and mind the shop. I'm sure it'll be quite the hard day's work. <laughs> oh yes, I have. Uh, you know, Cheeto and Nacho—they've been struggling with their new tricks. I'll have to teach them fetch and you know paw. Well, speaking of Cheeto and Nacho, I've been—I've uh, been working with them, and I think I'm better at. Animal handling now. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, see if he'll listen to you. Cheeto, I'll call over one of the dogs. And Cheeto is, is, is more obedient, but Nacho is a little bit more... Stubborn? No, I wouldn't call him stubborn, but he's independent, right? Cheeto will listen. Nacho won't. So I'll, I'll call over Cheeto and I'll say, okay, make him come to you. I'll do an animal handling check and call over Cheeto. I only have seven animal handling. It's not a very good stat for me. But you can actually do it. Other people would just... Well, he doesn't come in this moment. But fine. you know, it's fine. What? I, 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 to, to boost your confidence, I give like Cheetah the, the, the tiniest little sleight of hand nudge. And he'll, he'll get up and he'll walk over to you. Oh, good. See? I'm getting better every day. I give Cheetah a nice pat. Neil, oh. at oh. some point... Yeah. When the others are not around, Growl wants to have a serious conversation with these dogs using his speak to animals. <laughs> with spell. these dogs. Nice. Well, I think this is the perfect time for that. I think everyone goes to bed after a hard day of work and negotiating, piled up in Arrakis's uh, house slash office slash shop. And uh, you can find yourself with the dogs. All right. I do have to be in, a, in some sort of humanoid form for this. So I can mm -hmm. cast the spell. I'll be in human form. Um, but I've I've made an effort to show the dogs like my bear form. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, I'll I'll be in human form and I'll cast speak with animals. Um mm. uh, Hey guys. I look at both of them. They just cock their heads and look at you. Uh, can you can you understand me? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you guys maybe know I'm not like I'm not a human like them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bear. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, how do you, how do you feel about, like, just how, being with them? Them? The humans. Mm -hmm. Is mm. it nice for you? The dog struggles with implications. Such a complex question. They're man's Being best friend. People? They, they look at you. They gaze deeply into your humanoid eyes. I love it. So many tummy rubs. So many back scratches. So many treats. But so much to do. I love work. I love work. Don't you don't you sometimes wanna just go outside and go where you want to go. Yeah. 
But you'd rather be here? We go outside? You wanna go outside now? Well, Let's go outside now! Let's go! Well, I take them outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we'll trot with you. You only have, you know, so long for the spell to work. Um, so you can yeah. talk and walk. <laughs> how, long, how long does it last? Two, two rounds, rounds per, per level, level, so you got eight. Mm -hmm. uh, um, eight minutes. And... But but if you could just go out into the, the forest or yeah. just go, go wherever you want without the humans, and uh -huh. wouldn't you rather do that? What about dinner time? <laughs> well, you can go out in the forest. You can catch your own dinner. Yeah. That sounds good. But... I can catch dinner. Should we catch dinner now? I could go for a second dinner. Wait, hold on. They get kind of low to the ground. The ears flatten a little bit. You, you're not gonna tell Ren about it, are you? He says only one dinner. <laughs> no, I won't tell. Oh. And I think I'm gonna take them out into like the forest, or, or just like a little bit off, and uh, mm -hmm. I'll go into bear form, and we'll try to like hunt together. Maybe I'll have them show a little bit of pack tactics or something to me. Oh, yeah. Well, the dogs work pretty well. You quickly lose the ability to speak with them um, in the same way, but they know that you're part of the party, and they have uh, seen you in human form and bear form, and they, they understand the transition inherently. You smell more or less the same to these dogs. We mentioned this a little bit earlier, that your scent might be detectable in both forms by something that could yeah. smell it. Well, these dogs are the thing. These are the things that can recognize that you just sort of shift, and that's the thing, and yeah. that happens, and they're cool with that. Um, so when you previously mentioned it's time to go get food, uh, they will take off into the woods, and I think the dogs are a little bit faster than you when they sprint. Um, but soon enough, a lot of you will be out hunting and inevitably catch at least some small game, maybe a hare, maybe a... Maybe a unicorn? <laughs> I don't. I don't think they catch a unicorn, um, but I think they probably come across a little bunny warren, and together they can root them out, rip up the ground, tear it up completely, and get all the bunnies inside, and eat all that little bunny fur and little baby bunnies that don't even have the fur that are just like nice and smooth and go down like little gumdrops. Mm. Amazing. Um, and later you can come back to Swampside. Um. Yeah. Grow is. Kind of sad. Because it feels like... There's these animals, right? And he's an animal. But ever since he got his intellect, the, conversa the, the, the way he communicates with them, even with this spell, is extremely unsatisfying. Um, Can't have civilized conversations with fucking dogs. Yeah, it, it just, it, he just feels like they don't really understand what he means, and he doesn't, and he, that he feels the same about talking to humans. So I think after this conversation and trying out this spell for the first time, he feels kind of shitty, and he, but he feels a lot more motivated to um, pursue the elves and try to find someone who can explain what the fuck is going on. Well, between now and the morning, when he meets up with the party, does Grau generate any ideas on how you could find a lead on the elves? I think Grau is definitely going to pray again tonight. Nice. Mm. He wants to talk to the gods. Mm. Um, and I think he wants to try something. Because previously we've tried um, speaking to them, right? Mm-hmm. But I think for this time, he's going to stay in bear form. And just kind of try to... That, 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 that feeling that he gets when he casts magic, where he just jumps into the river and just is connected to it. He wants to try to achieve that while conceptualizing the gods. Um, and kind of ask for direction or some sort of insight into where he can find out more 
about his nature. Well, Grau, I want you to make me a wisdom slash willpower check and roll me a d100. And then we'll take a break. 26 on the check. And an 89 on the D100. We'll see you on the other side of a break, everyone. You're in the woods. You're making your prayers in bear form. You're asking for guidance on how you can, where to go, understand who you are and what you are. What is going on? Your prayers are answered. You're a druid, cleric. You channel the power of the gods every time you cast a spell. You have a direct line to them, but they don't speak like person to person. Nice. Instead, something happens in the world around you and you can tell intuitively that it is a sign. But it is a sign that you are going to have to interpret. When you're done with your prayers, you can feel something on your back. And as you roll to notice what, what is this on the back, you see that three leaves have fallen off a tree and landed on you. One is golden. One is red, and one is brown. And these three leaves landing on your back is your divine sign. The answers you see. <laughs> I was going to try his best to collect these in his bear claw. Um, and he's going to... What's this? What's the sleeping situation for me? Do you guys think I probably do? I have a room here. Yeah, you can stay in Arrakis's house. I'm assuming yeah. Arrakis. Yeah, that's fine. You're muted. You fucking dullard. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You can stay, but not August. He can't stay. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. All right. Uh, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna take these inside with him as best as he can. Mm. Um. What do they mean, Grau? Grau has no fucking idea. It reminds him of... You know, that time of the year when the leaves turn that color. Mmm. Autumn. Autumn. Mm. I think Grau's gonna go to sleep. And planning on, um... Relaying this to the party the next day. Okay. Well, the next day comes. Everyone wakes up. Arrakis is getting ready to go out and look for them herbs. That's right. When, when Grau comes along, change his entire fate and to keep him from having to do a hard day's labor. Thank God. God. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Arrakis is grumpily like lacing up like proper walking boots he's just been wearing nice comfy sandals the last few days oh my camera you see august, august smiling um i yeah. look over at ren and i'm like yeah this guy's gonna finally get to it you know he's gonna do what we do at long last yeah he will it's, do a um, day's work <laughs> it's gonna be rough for him <laughs> I mean, I've walked, I don't say this, I don't know what this conversation you're having, but I've walked around with you for many, many days on end. Thank you very much. You know, you take one day off to do a bit of admin work and you're getting <laughs> slighted. Um, but yeah, no, I'm getting my shoes on and I guess Grau comes in. Oh, there he is. We were wondering where you'd gone to, Grau. Um, he's going to be in human form and he's going to sit down with you guys and just lay the leaves next to each other on the table. That's strange. Um, I... I talked to the gods last night. You did? Yeah, and I asked them where to go. 
what to do. And they sent me this. They gave you some fucking leaves? <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Please, the, the gods work in nuanced and uh, mysterious ways. Neil, it's like, what did you say? It's June right now? It's June. I'm sorry, it's the 1st of July. Yeah. Beginning of summer. August, um, look outside. I take a look. What are the leaves like, Neil? Bright green. Actually, dark green. They're absorbing all of that sunlight. Mm, full cover. Do you see a single leaf that looks like these, August? Do I see a single leaf that looks like no, those? No, not one. No, I'm just... I'm not doubting you, Growl. I'm just surprised that, you know, they wouldn't say something or speak to you. I always felt like, you know, when you talk to the gods, they have the opportunity to do whatever they want. And if they want to talk to you, they will. I well, just didn't I think they would send you a sign. I think they did talk to me. People, many, many people pray to the gods their entire lives and never get so much as a, a flicker. Never mind something like this, Grau. You should be, you should be pleased. Your I'm very grateful. Nadinus must be strong. I, I think it's obvious what we have to do, right? I was worried about going to her with this in case there was more to it than we understood. But if this is the sign you've gotten, then I think it's fairly obvious. Sorry, am I what missing something? What are you guys pulling out of three leaves that landed on his back? When the do gods... the leaves turn this color? Listen, I know out of character, okay? In character. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, well, I guess fall? <laughs> or autumn. Uh... The gods I know speak that... in mysterious ways, from what I've heard. My experience with clerics is they're either charlatans or they have confusing answers. Might be the same for druids. I don't see a reason why we shouldn't go and speak to Autumn. She's always helped us. Right, Ren? Um, we did have some f misgivings about her, didn't we? Um, we were uncertain if we could trust her after our encounter with... Um, oh, forgive me. My my memory isn't as strong as it used Forrest. to be. But, but, Forrest, but, Ren. With Forrest, yeah. Maybe she wasn't happy about that. I suppose it's time we visited her, though. Um, how confident are you that this is what that sign means? I can't think of anything else. And I know you guys mistrust her, but I she does still mean a lot to me, and I really think that she could help us. I agree, Grau. I think we should go. I'll, like, reach for a leaf to touch it. Do you care? No. Okay, I'll, like, pick up the golden leaf, Neil. Mm-hmm. I'll inspect it. Is it beautiful? It's a leaf. It's just a leaf? It's you... not, like, the most perfect leaf? No, it's just okay. a fucking leaf. Just a leaf. Okay. Yeah, the bear brought home leaves, dude. I know. <laughs> I put it down. <laughs> well, fantastic, then. Shall we head out today? What are you going to do about your shop getting broken into now that you've uh, done your inventorying? Yes, we'll, we'll go on another luckily, adventure. I've completed the inventory and I've realized that there's not really much left to steal anyway, so. Would you uh, say. I'll change the luck and hope that that's for the best. I have to say, after uh, all our time out there adventuring in the swamp, coming back to working in the shop just didn't quite have the same uh, allure. Maybe you should leave the door open so that people can go in and not have to bust a window down to get in next time. No, I don't think so. I think that would be <laughs> counterintuitive. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I suppose then I'll take these herbs with me. I just grab the herbs that we took, Neil. Um, mm -hmm. How would you like me to start recording herbs for herbalism effect things? Like, do I just say herbs? And we'll, we'll sort of come back to it later. Swamp you have a side healing herbs, proficiency? Maybe. No healing proficiency, but I do have. So, does herbalism. 
how does herbal what herbs do you need for your proficiency no, literally no idea I don't think it says anything. But what I'm saying herbs. is, like, when would your proficiency call for the need of herbs? Only I when you can with make a healer, right? Oh, really? I can't make pulses or something. I don't. Well, that's. I'm asking. There's like a healing proficiency, and then there's also like a medical one. Uh, but I'll then... check. I'll check. I'll yeah. check. Well, I'm checking it in your um. In your thing now, right? Yeah. Herbalism. Those with herbalist knowledge can identify plants and fungus and prepare non-magical potions, pulses, powders, balms, salves, ointments, infusions, and plasters for medical and pseudo-medical purposes. Oh. They can also prepare natural plant poisons and purgatives. The DM must decide the exact strength of such poisons based on the poison rules in the DMG. A character with both herbalism and healing gains bonuses when using his healing talent. Yeah, yeah, only characters with bonus or with both healing and herbalism proficiencies can help others recover at the rate of three hit points per day of rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can't do that, but I can yeah. make pulses and stuff. Yeah, I think these are going to be non-HP, but like, you know, someone has walked through some poison oak and you can prepare a poultice that will ease the suffering and pain and the itching. Um, but I don't think we're going to be healing HP outside of a healing proficiency. So if you get a healing proficiency next, you can also attempt to diagnose and treat diseases. I'm not doing healing. I'm going to do toxicology mm -hmm. next. Okay. Um, but if you are then working with a healer somewhere, you might want herbs on hand so that they can use them for things. So, yeah. um, you've been in town for three weeks. I imagine you've done some looking for things on your own. Why don't you roll me a D20 for the relative success that you've had? Um, so I don't make a check, a herbalism check. Sure. But that's just a D20 plus your herbalism skill. I was going to, yeah. we're... Same, same. Okay. Yeah, well, it's minus four herbalism is the reason. But... Okay. Just roll a d20. I got a one. <laughs> oh, we got a one. Doesn't matter. Okay. It was, you know, <laughs> you didn't get out there. There's a lot of inventory to do. You had to examine the broken glass a <laughs> lot. True. The a lot of admin yeah. work to be done. Yeah. Because originally I was just going to write broken glass, but then I thought maybe I would try and count the number of shards. And then I realized mm. that... You had to grade the size of the shards because, mm. like, you couldn't really equate like a really large shard with a like a tiny shard. So when I go through the book, you have like multiple scribblings of like how you were actually going to do this. And yeah, yeah. There's up. actually like there's like a there's like a matrix, like a table, <laughs> with different levels of shards and the average weight of the shards in each level nice. and how many shards mm. of each level there is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Classic um, middle management work. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> build seven hours today. Um, <laughs> All right, party. Yeah, we get going. We're headed to Autumn's Tower in the yeah. swamp between Kigate and Papari. That's right. Sounds like it. Right. Let's go. Um, when we're a few hours along on the road, I mm -hmm. will... Um, I fall back, which I assume Ren is at the rear, going a bit slower. I look at you and I just... Shake my head, seeing you fucking slow down. <laughs> He's flagging. I fall back yeah. to Ren, and I say, um, "Ren, whilst we're whilst we're traveling together, um, and I pull my backpack off my my shoulder and pull out something under a black uh, cloth. I say, maybe you should hold onto this." Nice. Ren uh, will smile and nod. Very well. And uh, thank as you. you put your hand on it, I say, you understand if we part ways, <laughs> I'll be taking this back. You're such a bastard. It depends on how we part ways, Ren says. And he gives you a little wink. <laughs> but he takes the yeah, dagger. Okay. Yeah, okay. I take um, it off my character sheet. Yeah, I will take this shadow blade? What is it? Uh, Shadow, Shadow Blade, Blade plus two, I've got it as. It weighs oh. three pounds. Wait, we got a magic item to name. And we all know that higher tier patrons get to name some magic oh, items. Oh, true. So if you want to go through the chat and figure out a name, you can. Potato. Sure. Thing. I'll just give it. Wait, let me just get it. So uh, it weighs as much as an arming sword? Yes. Three it... pounds. Yeah. But it looks like a dagger. Yeah, but it feels like a, a heavy, like it's made out of lead or something because it's so damn heavy. Okay. Um, 
and it is it has an innate plus two to hit. It's one d eight damage. Um, plus two damage. One d eight plus two damage. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And right. Two to hit. Two to damage. Perfect. And it has the standard. Although it would be slashing no, or piercing. No, it's just melee. You cannot throw this dagger. It is too heavy. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, no range. So it would have speed of five or two. No, it still has a speed. Uh, actually, it's in between. Speed of three. Okay. So yeah. I'm gonna just test out my rolls. Here's an attack roll. Does that look right? Nice. Two plus two. Yes, that looks right. And then damage not... is two. That looks correct. Okay. Does he not have a plus hit? A plus to hit now? I do. Yeah, it's a two. Plus two. Oh, plus two, plus two. got it, got it, got it. That's All right, was. perfect. That's uh, that's huge, actually, to have a dagger like this. Um, so who were the... Which uh, which channel do you want me to go through to look for names? I just added everyone in there to put in good shadow dagger names. So we'll have a name for you next time. And if you want to suggest a name, join the Patreon for the giant here. And you can go suggest a name for this awesome magical item. Perfect. That's patreon.com slash save or die. All right. Well, everybody, while we're waiting for that, Mr. Mooton, because I know you love this game, why don't you roll me a D100? You want high or low? I don't know. You tell me. I want low. <laughs> no, I want high. You want high? Oh, yeah. Right down the middle. All right. Okay, cool. Our party is going through the swamp. As we do, nothing big, no big deal. Where is that? <clears throat> and uh, would everybody in the party roll me a 1d10? And Renatus, I'm going to need you to roll me one for each of your dogs, Ooh. too. You want low or high, Neil? You want, you want you... high, baby. You want high on this one. You want like five, six. Ren, I rolled nice. a 10. Nice. For Cheeto? Uh, this is Cheeto. Oh, Cheeto's sniffing some poo. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't know uh, Nacho? Uh, Nacho was on Nacho point. Nacho knows though. what's going on. Okay. Rackus, Garp, Rao, Renatus, Cheeto. <laughs> Me and Cheeto oh, are shit. looking for herbs. Did <laughs> you catch my drift? Uh huh. I don't understand. What do you mean? Looking for weed? Yeah, me and the dog were getting stoned. Let's go. Did everyone else pass? Yeah, I think so. I had like a nine. <laughs> My next character is just going to be a fucking stoner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep talking. I need to set some things up. My next character is going to be a heroin addict, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nice, man. Hell yeah. Four druggies. Sweet. My next character is going to be a Puritan who regards all drug use as uh, the source of evil in the world. Damn, um, we got conflict between characters set up. I can't wait for this fucking campaign. This sounds awesome. Um, but secretly, he's an alcoholic. Oh. Classic. Next character is going to be a priest. <laughs> uh, I really just want to make an archer. I just want to stand there and shoot things. I just want to be a shooting man. I get that. Shooting can be good. I like to shoot the shit. The problem is, I know for a fact, I'm going to be like, alright, I'm going to be like a support ranged character, and I'm going to roll like 8 to my HP, and I'm going to have to stand at the front like a fucking wall and just mm. eat. Eat mm -hmm. hits eat all day. Damage. Mm -hmm. um, can I ask you a quick question, Neil, or are you otherwise engaged? Oh no, go ahead. He's married. In the <laughs> one of my new spells requires a piece of undead as a component. Is that mm -hmm. a thing that I can have gotten from like Veilbrook or come across? Maybe I've killed a skeleton or something. Or um, for now, you I haven't killed any that? undead, and there are no magic shops in this part of the area, uh, so you don't have any pieces of undead. Not even Veilbrook. No, there's no magic shops in Veilbrook. Yeah, uh, the shop that burned down before you set up shop here was the only one in the region, and that's why its destruction was such a big deal, because wizards can't get components now. It's a huge problem. Um, now they gotta go and not be fucking lazy and right. get it themselves. So, okay. undead piece? I'm sure you could find it 
somewhere. If you have a friend who's a wizard, or you know there's some wizard shops up north, you could like make a supply run with like a, a couple dead. of weeks of downtime. Thanks. All right, so we're walking. We're walking through the swamp when something appears out of it. The four members of the party who have passed will see this, this thing happening. And I'm gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Jamie, roll me a d6. Yes, I'm sir. I'm in bear form, by the way. Good to know, thank you. I need to Ooh, start writing. Three. Now. It is Renatus. He's in trouble. Um, but you passed your your d10. You rolled high, so you were yes, not sir. surprised. But what was happening is the water near the party oh, here on this map begins to shift and turn and a snake-like appendage of water, complete with eyes and like a little snaky snout, reaches out of the water and is coming in your direction. However, you were is not he surprised. An no, he gets to roll, he gets to roll initiative is what he gets. Got oh, shit. Um, and so uh, everyone who rolled a four or higher gets to roll initiative. Anyone who failed to roll a four or higher must just lose a round. Seeing this thing coming at me, I'm going to take a total defense action, which doesn't require initiative. Yep, you get plus two to your AC, I think. And saving yes. throws or something? I don't think saving something like throws. That. Uh, I will, I can look I don't it remember. I, I can also uh, look it up. Uh, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> I like your new setup, uh, Nick. What do you Just mean? Just kidding. Put something on your fucking walls. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Oops, sorry. But it wouldn't look like a bathroom anymore. <laughs> I need that's a minute. <laughs> <to the toilet. laughs> mm, so that's that's my headcanon now. Nick is just in the bathroom on the toilet. Yeah, I, for years, he had like a fan <laughs> in the background during like the summer that looked like a toilet and just in my mind yeah. he was just like recording in a bathroom. <laughs> yes. That's where Fran makes him record, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, Nick, can you take you... a break? I need to use the shitter. Sorry. <laughs> Jamie, when you take total defense, you gain an AC bonus equal to half of your level. It's mm. just your level. So that would be two. Two so, AC yep. bonus. Base. Oh, wait, okay. but you have um, tumbling, don't you? I do not yeah. have you tumbling. Don't? No, I don't have a tumbling proficiency. No. Okay, cool. Then you can get a bonus of two to your AC. Perfect. Um, and that's what you're doing. Everybody else? Did everyone else roll? Did your dog roll? Uh, this dog's got to roll. This dog's well, going to roll. One dog in, I think. He's going to roll. Nice. <clears throat> Nacho going to bite. That dog's going to fuck him up. Okay. Here we go. We're going to start off our initiative with Growl. You can see this snake-like appendage rise from the water and then move quickly in the direction of Renatus. And you know the swamp is home to all sorts of creatures and monsters. And mm -hmm. Technically, you should be going to the left, not the right. Yeah, I, I see this thing, and uh, I mean, what else can I do but throw my goddamn bear claws at it? All right. 17. 17 hit. Sick. Three damage. Hmm. This is going to be an interesting ruling that he makes. Hmm. <laughs> So, watch the HP bars. Wow. You oh, slash with bad. one claw. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Second claw. 19. Hit. Four. Excellent. And the bite? And I bite at it with a oh, net. Way, oh, baby! Oh, oh. You sink your teeth into this snake-like appendage, like chomping oh. it off. 
Another D6. Excellent. And another D6, too. Nice. <laughs> For 11 yeah. damage. Get Excellent. out of That's here. insane. Have you moved his HP? <laughs> I have. Yes. <laughs> you He's down about 10%. Rip through this creature. Um, and it reformed. Like, the water collapses that you break off from the rest of it. And then it just sort of reforms itself. And it appears smaller than it did before. Next person initiative. Nacho. Nacho cheese. Nacho if the dogs die here. <sighs> uh, Peachel, nachos are going. Or oh, no, sorry. Peachel, potato, but, sorry. I didn't, I have not used control of the dogs yet. Um, I... Uh, you'll notice the dogs have bites up on the top. There's a Perfect. zero dot initi bite and a bite button. So you don't have to go open their sheets. The dog goes and takes a chomp, a chomp. 19 oh, plus a one. critical hit. Roll me another Jesus. 2d4 on top of this. <laughs> Dude, the dogs snapped. snapped. Get oh absolutely my God. Chomp. Dog, Are you serious? <laughs> Ultra Do spear dogs dog. Do more damage than bears? Mm. Bear, two D four. Well, he's got three attacks. Oh no, right? I guess no, three attacks. Black bear, D six, D three, D three, D six. But dogs do two D four. But they only get one attack. They only get, they one, only get one attack. Oh, okay. Their bite, their bite is pretty good. Um, yeah. And once again, the water suffers damage <laughs> from the incoming blows. Uh, um, I'll back up a square. Yes. Am I going to provoke an attack of opportunity? That was a person with a sword, you would. I back up. All right. No attack of opportunity. Based. And uh, I'm going to move, I think, one over so I can get reached. I guess I'll move two over for reach two. Sure. <clears throat> um, and here you go with my glaive. 21. Oh, that's a beautiful hit. Your glaive slashes Seven. right into the thing. Whoosh. Water sprays all over the place. Uh, guys. <laughs> and the creature reaches out towards Renatus. Renatus can't swim. <laughs> no, I, I can't. <laughs> your AC is improved by two 16? because of your defense, so it's 16. 16, baby. That's a um, oh, shit. It will hit you. The water begins to wrap around your leg. This provokes an attack of opportunity with an actual weapon in your hand. Oh yeah, well let me, yeah. just all, what's this, the uh, shadow blade? Yeah. I make a little shadow blade attack, swoosh, 16. Hits! All right, shadow blade damage, oomph, four. Uh, offhand dagger, swoosh, oomph, a nat Ooh, 20. Uh, what's that, 2d4? <clears throat> yeah. Boom, five damage. Destroying it. Your weapons go right through it, and it wraps around your leg anyway. And oh. pulls. Give me a saving throw versus paralyzation or be pulled into the water. Uh, Listen, I can't swim. Oh. Uh oh. Into the water, Renatus goes. I take a big oh. old breath before I go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Time to make a new character. Hey, listen. Everyone Ren was good show. until he wasn't. <laughs> Arrakis, help him. Thanks. Uh, my roll is... I don't know what you want me to roll, I guess. Um, I'm going to try and go in and drag him out through... Oh, so you're going to throw your glaive to the ground and dive into the water and pull him out? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, we'll change that to a th only a plus three. So that'll be I'm gonna... 11 for you. Do I think I can swim with chainmail on? You will guaranteed sink in chainmail. Okay, I'm going to then spend my round taking off the chainmail. Okay. Is that a whole round action? I think so. Might even be a two round action. Let me take a look. Chain mail? It's just a shirt. I think it's, if it's just chain mail, I think it's just one round, but I'm double checking just so Thank there's you. no later lawyering. All right, guys, I'm rolling stats in the background. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> 
I can't find it right now. It's fine. It's fine. It's one round. It's okay, one round. I'm and taking if it's my not, then... Off. Then I was just quick. Thing. Yeah. Uh, Nacho! Roll me initiative, Doggo. And Cheeto. Yeah, Nacho, just, I need to roll initiative, too. I was just thinking Cheeto. about doing it. Just play the dogs. Hurry, Ruckus! <laughs> hurry! I can play the dogs. Initiative. Oh, no, it's saying for, uh... Initiative. Fight. Ooh, sorry. Can I... That should have been a bite initiative. No, can I ask a question about these types? Like, would it... Is it would it be possible to, like, scare an elemental? There's nothing in the spell that suggests it wouldn't, but... I've got Archaeology and Spellcraft. I don't know if you can answer that. I just don't want to waste my action. Um... Yeah. You think you could do it. Okay. Cool. So, we'll try that then, because... Right. Not much yeah. else I can do. Probably. Oh, he says after I roll it. It's probably Ooh. fine. I wouldn't it's really... It's fine. Don't worry about it. I mean, it. it's it's really only Renatus. You're just getting your dagger back, right? Um, no, not if he gets dragged under the water. It's true. Well, it's your turn, Arrakis. Um, I'm assuming I can still see the water elements, or at least still see Ren. Well, you can see Ren, but the water elemental is underwater, and it's not clearest of water to begin with, so um, is this a single target spell, or is this an AoE spell? It's one creature within 30 feet. Hmm. Well, then you might want to have picked another one, which you would have known at the start of the round, because it submerged itself, and I don't think you can see the elemental itself. You just see water <sighs> and a submerging wren, so okay. place it. I cast Spectral Hand instead. Excellent. I think we even have a hand for you somewhere. No, not sure Doesn't matter. Do. You produce a spectral hand. It appears above the water. Right within 30 yards? Within 30 yards. Easy peasy. Next up is Nacho, the loyal uh, hound dog. Yeah. I will put it Nacho. under the water if I can, like as close to where Ren is as possible. Nacho barks at the water On the and sees the water, Ren going in and Nacho is a loyal pup, but he doesn't know what he should do. What should he do? What would a dog do? He he kind of you know what he does. He does that dog thing, right? Where he's like, he's he's at the edge of the water and he's like paddling back and forth. He's trying to see what's happening. He's like, woo, 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 woo. Um, mm -hmm. but Nacho's a little bit braver than Cheeto, so Nacho jumps in and starts biting the water. Mm. Just he's like, all right, <laughs> Nacho, you go. And he goes in the direction of Ren in the direction of, of the, the clear twisting and torsion that the point that is pulling Ren and with his great doggy intellect of three, you can make an attack roll. All right, here we go. Boom, 16, four damage or uh, 70 to hit. Excellent. Good job. You've done it again. Growl. Good boy. <sighs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna fucking keep doing exactly what I was doing before. <laughs> Do not the care. Water. Hell Rip yeah. The elemental. Excellent. Bears can swim. Dogs can swim. We're all good so far. Please unleash the beast. Claw. 19. Hit. For two damage. Excellent. 18. Hit. Three damage. Is that Excellent. Archie? Fight. Yeah. Uh, uh, Archie. He's not Archie now. Oh, this thing is getting really badly injured. Cheeto, way back over here behind Arrakis. Oh no. Cheeto's an idiot. He doesn't know what's going on. Cheeto, <laughs> Cheeto whimpers. <laughs> Cheeto's the dumb one. I'm gonna be honest with you. Cheeto whimpers and he does that thing that dogs do where they like spin in a circle. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he spins in a circle and he sits down because he didn't get a command. And he sits down because he's fucking stupid. If you right click on him. You can go to multi-sided and choose side, and you can get a token of him sitting down. Nice. Uh, I don't. He sits you... down and looks up at Arrakis uh, with oh, curiosity. Good boy. Just heads up, potato. You didn't roll in, and neither did the elemental. I'm uh, paralyzed, aren't I? No, you no. are just underwater. You're not paralyzed. Oh, it's or a saving throw you had to make. Oh, I misunderstood. Oh yeah. Oh I'm no, please. I didn't even guy. see that you hadn't rolled in. Um, and well, let me. 
Excellent. Well then, you are up at the same time as Garp is taking off his clothes. Um, go for it, Renatus. You're being pulled underwater. Now here's your decision. If you go limp and you just concentrate on holding your breath, you can hold your breath for longer. But if you're going to try and fight this thing, you'll burn through the air in your lungs more quickly. And you've only got the eight Han. You don't actually have a lot of air holding space. You've got three minutes if you do nothing, two minutes if you struggle, or two rounds and three rounds. Renatus, um... I save you. Is going to sheath his small dagger, try to grab a hold of just anything, and try to prevent himself from getting pulled deeper. And and he's going to fight. He's going to try to fight out. Give me a saving throw versus paralyzation. Sure thing. Here we go. Let's go. Big rolls. Boom. Close. You. Are my saving throws accurate? Uh, 12 or... He's level 5. Level 5? Just check it. We updated that those. One point? One point like yes, 12. We just updated them. <clears throat> okay. We're it was worth checking. Yep. All right. That is one unsuccessful round underwater. It's not going so well. Does he still get one attack? He only sheathed no. one dagger or no? no, no I'm not going one. to attack. I'm just not trying to keep myself from getting pulled deep. Garp, you change out of your clothes. Everyone roll initiative. Except for Cheeto. He's dumb. He's not getting in order. Cheeto is dumb. He's the dumb one. Mm-hmm. He's All the right. dumb well, one. That's what it is. Nacho's clearly the brave one. Because he's going first. And he's getting in there. And he's unleashing those big doggy teeth. <laughs> oh, An eight to hit. It's a miss. Um, high ground <laughs> Renatus <laughs> high water you gotta do it this round buddy saving throw versus paralyzation I give everything I can to this escape <sighs> oh. Arrakis what do you got I cast chill touch and I send the hand to try and grab the I can see which direction Ren is being pulled in mm-hmm I can see where he's being grabbed from, because that's going to be the place furthest in the direction he's being pulled. Mm-hmm. So I can kind of guess where the creature is, and I'm going yeah. to try and... Well, he's actually pulling it. Renatus out in this direction, and these guys are having to follow. And the water in this area between islands is not super deep, as you might expect, so he's been sort of dragged along the surface, mm. and he's now coming out into this slightly deeper pool. And your chill touch can go towards the creature and give me a roll to hit. I would like to get a lank or a back attack. Um, the hand always goes directly towards the creature, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've, we've, it, it beelines. It doesn't do, you know, positioning on its own. It's only a second level spell. Uh, and you get a plus two to hit with it anyway, right? So. But am I not flanking it from this direction, maybe? But, uh, but yeah, I get that. Don't worry two. about it. it. You don't get flanking from this creature. Sorry. 11? 11, that is including your plus two? Yeah. No. Even Arf. though it's just it's just touch. It's true. It's just touch. I see. Good question. Where does the AC, the water elemental, come from? It might come from. We had from... a similar discussion with the gloom wing, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. Shadow plane, water plane. Yeah. Yes. I think it's the it, the with the water elemental because it's like yeah I think it should be on sets. No, that's fair. That's a good point. I think you just need to graze it, and I think with swords and arrows and slings and bolts and stuff, you might like splash against the the edges of the water, which might not actually be all that tough. Yeah. Or, um, okay. Damage. So it has to make a save versus spell. Save versus spell. You have to hit, and then it has to make a save as well. It does, it does the damage even if it passes. Got it. It loses a point of strength if it fails. Its saving throw is a 16. Ah, it's a failure. It loses a point of strength and takes three damage. Nice. Negative energy damage. Huge. Can you put Chill Touch into chat for me, please? 
will take three damage. Hmm. I think this could be quite effective against a water elemental. Yes. Yes. On this particular case, this is going to do quite well. You are going to slow the creature down, which in this case is going to actually give Renatus an extra saving throw. Ooh, ass okay. is now at a weaker strength. Essentially, you're rolling at advantage after the fact. You want me to save again? Yes, against paralyzation. <laughs> oh, oh, funny. <laughs> oh, you oh. even you were being so <laughs> nice to me, and I'm just Garp. I'm. Uh, I jump in, and I'm going to attempt to grab him and drag him up. All right. You throw yourself in the water. You are a proficient swimmer. Yep. Okay. It's this busy area over here. Everyone is going after this. All sorts of creatures. You can grab Renatus. You're in this sort of semi-shallow area over here, and you can tug and pull. And why don't you give me a saving throw versus paralyzation to pull him out? Uh, at advantage, because the creature is slowed. Um, That's just petrification polymorph? Oh, no, 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 the first one, sorry. Here's one. Here's number two. <laughs> okay. oh, hey. You Bye. will Bye. hug him uh, free on the surface. I'm going to, like, Shh. push him up to get him air. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Growl. It is your Burst turn. from the surface. <gasps> You're muted. You, Dollard. <laughs> Dollard is you're good still muted. In 2022. I'm so sorry. Listen, I'm <laughs> chipping me. away at this guy. It's maybe taking a while, but nobody's taking damage yet, and we're making progress. So here's a claw. Oh, Nat that's 20. Hit. That's right. Another D3 for that one. Boom. Excellent. That's four damage right there. Beautiful. Claw again for an Fucking easy brutal. 21. It's Archie. It's back, yeah. For an easy max damage roll, and then I sink my fangs into the wretched <laughs> elemental, and I uh, miss completely. It's gone yes, again. you miss completely. But that's the end of that round, and it's time for the next round of initiative. Um, I'm also going to roll in Cheeto, because I assume you can yell at Cheeto by now. Quick, quick question. The initiative to use the hand would just be the same initiative as it is to cast the spell. Yes. Should be one. Did you then, roll right? Nacho in? I did roll Nacho in for you. Okay, perfect. Uh, no, I rolled in Cheeto, but I will roll Nacho now. I, I can. Oh, yeah, okay. I just didn't want to overwrite your roll. No, it's. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> Arrakis, you're up first. You've got like a slight high ground position. You direct the hand oh, back in the a direction. Plus one, you say. <laughs> I just meant an overview. An overview. Uh, um, that's a miss, I think. The hand will well, miss. Well, probably a miss. Yeah. yeah. Growl. Yep. We're, I'm doing the exact same shit again. Boom. Wow. Well, miss. Whoosh. 19, Hits. though. Ugh. And a bite. Nice. 22 for three. Crit or no? Uh. I believe? Yes, that is a crit. Yeah, so I'm going to get you another... Roll another d6? Yeah. Excellent. And it is chipping away, all right, Cheeto. Oh, Cheeto. Finally, he can see Renatus. His ears purr. His tail wags. He leaps to his feet. Papa! Papa, I return. You're, you're back, Papa. And he, he runs over to me, tail wagging, excited. Because he doesn't see any danger. He's like, oh, he fell in the water. Oh, he runs over to me. He's an idiot. He's nice. dumb. Um, and I'm like, and I'm, I'm like, still gagging up water. And I'm like, bum, bum, pointing. And the dog is just. Arr? 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 Just give me the head tilt. He's useless. Nacho, He's meanwhile. Is the thread over, Nacho? Is it just water? Can Nacho even tell that there's a creature there? Um, I would guess Nacho, having seen... Can Nacho perceive the creature? That's the question. Like, what can Nacho see? Does he see that I'm free and out of the water? He was just he fighting... He sees a... that you're free and out of the water, and you can't really see the water, the elemental, at this point. Your, your best chance of seeing it was when 
it was gripping around you. And I think at the end of the round, the bear was already on top of the creature, ripping into it. But now that you are away from it, he just retreats. Tell where it is. Yeah, he comes back to me. He's like, okay, runs back. I, whatever got him, I got it. We're good. Okay. Excellent. Well, the creature fades into the water. I'll bark um, out. Everyone, get out of the water. Quickly. There's a Go shark to where in the water. Is. Renatus, it's your turn. Uh, yeah, I, I get out of the water. <clears throat> Are we going I'm going to... I'm gonna yeah. help him like swim over, Neil. Yeah. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Everyone can begin um, to escape. My movement we're will gonna... go here, and then I'm gonna go and pick up my shit. We're just gonna leave Grow in for just a moment because if that's okay. Uh -oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. You help Renatus get to over here, and then you move back and start to grab your shit. It'll take you a little longer to put on your armor, yep. but you think you've got the movement to get that stuff, and you can end your turn over here. I'm gonna wait to put on my armor. I'm gonna just pick up my glaive and get ready okay. for a, a water elemental. Okay. Um, we're going to leave Growl where he is, and we're going to roll initiative for everybody again. Uh, can I ready an attack with the chill touch? I think I should be able to, right? Because it's kind of like a melee attack. <clears throat> it's not like I'm expending magical energy. That's the, that's the problem with casting a spell. You can't hold the expulsion of the magical energy, but I think I should be able to just direct the hand to attack when it sees. Yeah, because you're now just directing the hand. Can yeah. you put the hand spell? Yes, here it is. Let's see. Any touch attack? Yeah, you can just delay until later in the round and go after the elemental if that's what you're waiting to do. I'm no yeah. dummy. I know that my bear is still in the water where the water elemental was. I assume mm -hmm. that he might get dragged in. I'd like to roll into initiative with my glaive to like be ready to go and attack the water elemental while I wait Great. for him to get out. Please do. Um, Nine. Nine. What about Renatus, Nacho, and Cheeto? Are you just hanging out in dry land? Are you getting more <sighs> safe? Are you getting ready to attack? Uh, Ren can't swim so he's gonna get close yeah. to the edge mm -hmm. uh and he's ready to pounce forward to attack and he has the dogs on like they're healed to him ready to move Got if it. anything okay. if we see something roll me into initiative with your dagger then and growl what is your plan what did you say was happening to me you're just in the water and the creature has like faded away. It's somewhere out here, but it, you can't see it. It just looks like water in the water, so how the hell could you tell what it is? Yeah, I feel like there's not much of a point to chasing this thing down. I'm just gonna get out. Okay, roll me a movement initiative, please. Oh, okay. Thank you. And we go to the table. So we're gonna start with the Rackus. You are readying the hand to strike at anything that might be dangerous. Yeah. Okay, it's there, it's ready. It's kind of right over here where you last saw the elemental. Growl, yeah. it's your turn. The party was generally going to the left of the screen at this point in time. Where do you wanna move? I think I'll probably move towards Renatus. Okay. Just in case it comes back, you know, and he's obviously vulnerable and he kind of has a thing for him. Yeah, actually, in fact, Rao, Garp, and Renatus are all in the same turn, so I imagine you're all coming to the same... Yeah. Is that what you're doing, Moon? Uh, no, I'm going to sit here and cover my... Your what's stuff. What's called? Uh, my ship. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, near the end of the round creature will emerge once more from that same spot earlier and it'll pop up and Arrakis your hand can start moving good towards it but not before it gets off its attack and it will oh, reach out uh, you do get an attack of opportunity yes oh it's a miss it's a natural one the 
water elemental will once again reach out towards you, whoosh, missing yes. you with its attack. Mm. Uh, and that's the end of the round, except for Arrakis, who can get his uh, the hand. Ooh. That looks like a flank attack this time, though, Neil. I think so. 16. Hit. I'm right. Uh, Give him the old one, too. Say versus spell and three damage. Uh, 1d20 greater <laughs> than 16, 16, I think it was. Failure. It's now got minus two to hit. It has a minus two to hit. Yep, one pair. Failed save. Okay. All right, initiative. Um, we don't get a chance to react. No, uh, okay. you are all over on this side, and I think it's just a little bit too far to react. The hand was a floating thing nearby. Okay. Um. Need to, how do I add, um, I like my shadow blade initiative to the top left? It must show me how to do that. I yeah. I will set that up for you right now. I think. I think I can. That way, I can go. just tap that. Like it. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. But I don't have to open the sheet and navigate every time. Yes. Let's make that happen. I'm gonna fuck this water elemental up. I thought I thought that sentence ended. <clears throat> <laughs> Way sooner than that. What did? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it is your. Fir- oh, great! It's already your first attack. Excellent. Perfect. Auto blade. Yeah, just make sure it stays your first attack. Yeah. Okay, so that will actually just pick whatever the top weapon is. Yes. That's actually perfect because I rearranged based on that. Ah, perfect. Well, then there you go. That should be shadow blade zero point. Initiate Shadow Blade and Shadow Blade for attack. Lovely. Ugh, amazing. Okay. First up me, is Cheeto and the Elemental at the same time. So they do Cheeto. What is he doing? Cheeto, help me. <laughs> Cheeto has been given the command to attack. Now, I pointed, what is visible to Cheeto? What does Cheeto see? Uh, Cheeto can see a now a much thinner snake-like water creature, you know, serpentine figure emerging from the water and sort of darting and sort of striking at Dark. Cheeto is dumber than the average dog, but he is a good boy and he will do what he can. But he's going to charge forward. Yeah. He's going to bite that snake. He's going to he's going he's to bite it. Boom. It's a, a 60. Oh, sorry. I grabbed Nacho by accident. 16's a hit, and Cheeto will rip into the creature. The elemental, however, will do one more of these darting bites in the direction of August with a hit. And August will need to make me a saving throw versus death. Versus death? Uh, Paralyzation. DVD. DVD. (sighs) Ah, It will tug and it will pull and it will slip its grasp off of you, too weak to pull you down. And growl, dear old growl, the growliest of them all, I think you will finish this off. Right? Yeah. Fucking hell yeah. I'm swimming over. Love the thought of a bear jumping in, cannonballing, and then like doggy paddling over. (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) And a claw emerges from the swampy water. <laughs> 13? Miss. 21. Hit. Oh, Four. lovely. The serpent is holding on by just a thread as your teeth come and Miss. do not hit it. Yeah. Uh, Rackus? Uh, assuming I'm not flanking anymore. Yep. Yes. Way back over here. You know, you can wade through this water. You did it before. You know you can walk through this path if you yeah. want. I'll walk through the swim. path. I'm a, I'm a brave boy. I got my boys near me, too. I yeah. make my way over here. So that's uh, 30 feet of movement. Oh, how much movement do I get? 30 yeah. or 60? Uh, you have 120 feet of movement. Oh, right. Uh, I get up yeah. here. I attack. 
Um, and I give him I give him the old Shadow Blaze Riz. Uh, plus Eleven's eleven. <sighs> oh, uh, offhand. Was there an offhand? Uh, you know what? I don't have my offhand out because I'm scared okay. of getting pulled in again. All right, Nacho. The room for Nacho in the party. It's dog time, baby. Let's go. Nacho, okay. He runs forward, okay? He's like... And, like, time actually slows for a fraction, and you just see the hair. As he pounces off of Cheeto's back, okay? <sighs> and does, like, a flying pirouette bite, landing on the other side of this creature. Oosh. Blank attack. Rock attack. Okay. But he's not actually there. It's, he's really just here. Look, yeah, it's in the if, air while he makes the bite. So it's only a 15 to hit, which is not good enough. But in reality, he didn't go all that far. He's just beside the other dog. Garp. Creatures before have... you. It's been trying to bite you. Gotta end this. So here you go. Please. Miss, but I have Miss. two attacks this round. Excellent. It's miss as 15? well. All the dice are misses. We go to one last round of initiative. Roll your dice quickly. One day we'll kill this monster, oh, Copium. Nah, yeah. Arrakis looks like you're going first. It. We'll do it. And Perfect. the creature will dissipate. The whole snake will sort of freeze it for a moment and then break. And little bits of ice will float and bob in the swamp at your feet. I, uh... This, uh, where did it first grab you? I say to Ren as I come down here. Uh, I was, I was here, uh, and I point, I point to this piece of the ground. I, I think I was here. Uh, that's that that patch of oh, ground yeah. right there. How thick is the like the shrubbery under the water here? Mm, not super thick. Most of it floats on the surface. I wonder if there are, you know, maybe there's some coins down there stolen from the dead if the elementals killed others. I can go and take a look. Well, it it did try to pull me over there, and I'll point over there <clears throat> to the to the deeper part of the, um, the swamp. And perhaps that way. Um, maybe... <sighs> if only we had a frog. Yes, maybe there's a frog or a fish that could help us. Oh yeah, we could. I say, could we talk to them? Over at Growl. Maybe. Um. Maybe. Did you take talk with animals today? We uh, need to. No. So I have. I've learned second level spells, but uh, so the default is. Um. So the default used to be cure light wounds times two, but if we're in like terrain where there's a lot of plants, I take cure light wounds and then entangle. entangle. Yeah, and then for second level spells, yeah. um, I feel like I should just always prepare cure moderate wounds, right? E probably. Yeah. Do you have three level one spell slots now, though, or is it still two? I only have two. Okay. Um, Neil, okay, as August is getting ready to go under the water... I am going to cast uh, the text mm. magic on the off chance there's something magical down here. I'm hoping that I can sort of get an idea if there's something under the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 60 feet, so I check, you know, like this area. The only magic you detect is coming off of Renatus's shadow blade. Yeah. You hear that, Nick? Okay. Renatus's. Shadow Blade. True. <laughs> yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> I don't say anything, I just let the spell wear off as I let August go look, looking around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it will go under and I'll do some swimming around and see if I can find anything new. We do a little swimming. I do some swimming. Some looting, too. Oh... I need you to roll me. Surprise, there's another water elemental. 2d10. And you want Four. low. Nice. Okay. Fuck yeah. Good, good, good. It's <laughs> fine, it's fine. You dig around, um, you search in the area. Give me a perception check. 
24. Yeah. You can dig up. Um, 20 copper and and silver in a bag that looks very much like a stolen bag off of a, um, a caravan of some kind, perhaps, but it's attached to the side of a um, bullywug of all creatures that is sort of resting in the bottom of the pit there. We're rich. Yep. <clears throat> uh, what level of magic did Nick get off of the Shadow Blade with his detect magic? You mean oh, yeah. faint, like dim, moderate, blah, heavy, blah, blah, blah. overwhelming? Yeah, and it's a uh, spool, I suppose, as well. 10% chance. A level. Yeah. Um, the Shadow Blade is a moderate magical item. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll take the coins and I'll come back up. I found this bag. That's it. It's a paint. All there is. paint <clears throat> magical item. Paint. Yeah, I think plus two is faint. plus one. Faint is plus two. Moderate is three. Strong is four. Overwhelming is five. Oh, that makes plus sense. Weapon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, any coin's better than no coin. I suggest we uh, keep moving. Yeah. Pick up my chain mail and I'm going to put it in my bag for this area. Um, Probably a good idea. Mm. Just for now. My uh, spells wire off. All right. Why don't we go to a break and we come back from the other side. We will arrive and we'll see what's going on. Sweet. Feel the water snake. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Save or Die Outcasts. Our party stumbles upon Autumn's Tower. Not by chance, but because we've been here before many times, and here we are returning. There is this before the same, you. Is this the same day that we just fought that thing? Yes, same day. Thank you. Uh, sorry. There before you is the five story tall tower, four story tall tower, um, with a little ring around it on the third floor, a gate around this little island it's sitting on with a garden and a fountain, and the little wall on the other side of the, around the gate. Um, the gate stands open and out before you is Autumn's dog. Does anyone remember the name of Autumn's dog? Sure, pause. Remembers. Not pause. No, pa- no, he, pause. He meant pause. <laughs> he meant pause while we think. <laughs> we need to. We we, we didn't do this yet. We really should have done this. Um, we need to talk strategy. Um, oh, yes, I agree. Uh, so maybe as we approach outside, Growl's going to turn into uh, fucking human form, and um. So, if we talk to her, we have a problem, right? Because if we want to talk to her about where to go, and maybe about my encounter with Forrest, Forrest told us some bad things about her. Hmm. You're right. Yeah, that's right. So we need to think about how we ask her. You could say you don't have to mention forest or the fireflies. You could stick to talking about elves. Mm. You could say you are having memories of them, mm-hmm. and you'd like to know where they are so you could find them, maybe. Okay. Plausible. Okay. Yeah, maybe I can just say that I've been having memories. I uh, I also think though, Grau. If Nadinas herself led you in Autumn's direction, and you know she does seem central to your situation, um, I'm a cautious man, and it's your own choice. But perhaps you should trust her. Perhaps we should trust her. I trust Nadinas, and I think. My intuition tells me that I trust Autumn. I think maybe I want to tell her everything. And then August to see what they think. Not everything we've done 
makes us look good. Like what? But, well, I mean, we sold out Forest. We. Mm, she'll know about that, right? She was with Zara when it happened. That's true. I don't think since then we've done too much wrong. I mean, we could probably leave out our discussions with Sackmore in the tomb. If she asks specifically, then give me the chance to talk about it. But otherwise, I think with regards to Brow and his nature and things he remembers, that's his choice to make what to share with her. Fair. That seems fair. Yeah, that seems reasonable to... I, when you said tell her everything, I thought you meant everything, everything. Yes, there's no need to be overly open. I don't care about sharing things about Sackmo. Yeah, if she asks, then she probably already knows, and we might as well tell her. Hmm. There's probably some truth to that. Yeah. I'd be careful with secrets around this one. Secrets okay. always come to light. That's what my old tutor used to say. Mm, yeah. It's in his interest to say that, though. He doesn't want you keeping secrets from him. Mm. They found out he was uh, <laughs> doing something with the maid. Oh, well, I guess that's... Never quite got that one. <laughs> Never quite got that story. <clears throat> Okay, uh, uh, so, but kind of look towards Grau then as we're approaching the, the tower or take a few, like slow back in the walking so he's at the head of the party and can be the first to kind of interact. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to stay in human form as I approach. Excellent. You arrive at the tower. The gates are open. Her dog is hanging out there. It wags his tail. It looks at you, and then it just continues to sort of gaze into the garden. Grau gives the dog a look and reminded of his conversation with Nacho and Cheeto. It's a little sad and kind of moves past him. Mm. I look at the walls of the tower, Neil. They look unclimbable. Yes. yes. Magically so. Well, they just look like they're really well, like, polished down stone stone that's been like ground down so it doesn't have a lot of bumps on it and there just would be no place to hold with your hands there's just no way you could physically I'm just climb saying that. that while this scene is going on arrakis is mostly interested in trying to see if there's similarities between how this tower looks and feels and what he's read about sigris's yeah. tower i'm not actively gonna narrate everything i'm doing but it's little things like that right like you, you told me something about the walls so i'm mentioning the walls now but i'm assuming there was lots make of make me an things. intelligence check now and we can Answer it later. Okay. Classic Nick roll coming up. Ah, oh, okay. Classic. Um, eventually, as you approach the tower itself, Autumn will come on down. A big bright smile on her face. Oh, growl! It's so pleasant <coughs> to see you again, and you brought friends just in the nick of time. Oh, how are you? Very pleasant to see you too, Autumn. And it's very pleasant to see you. And she brings out a treat for you. Um, Grau will take it with his hand. Um, and look at her and say, thank you very much, Autumn. And he'll very carefully put it in like a pocket of his. And she will look on in momentary amazement. Um, and then quickly like remask herself and go, <clears throat> um, you must have come for a reason. Please. Take a rest inside. I'll have the unseen servants bring food and water. Um, tell me, what is it that I can do for you here? Autumn, I've come with questions regarding mm -hmm. my nature and who I am and where I'm from. Ah, yes. Or would you like everyone to... Um, practice. These friends of mine I've become very close with and wherever I go to find out more about myself I want to take them with me. So everything that I learn and everything that I find out I want to share with them. Well that's great. I'm so proud 
of you that you're making good friends. Everyone, let's let's have a seat, she says. Um, and then she'll snap some fingers and unseen servants will begin to move. Eventually fruits and nuts will be brought down, water and wine will be brought down. Um, and Autumn will sit with you in the middle of the tower, with that tearful smile on her face. Um, well, Growl, please. If, growl. Once you're refreshed. If, mm -hmm. Growl, seeking validation, is going to attempt to pick up the wine glass in a way that a human would, very dexterously with his fingers. He's not really doing a great job. And he's kind of shaken. He's going to take a sip. And he very obviously doesn't like it, but he's going to try to mask that. And then he's going to shakily put the wine glass back down. Mm -hmm. um, she will, she'll nod an improvement as you... Autumn, a while ago, I met someone. And uh, Grau will recount the story of meeting Forrest and the memories that came flooding back to him. And he'll, always, he'll also tell Autumn all about how he's connected to Nadinus um, mm -hmm. for the past couple of weeks. And Nadinus gave him this sign and he'll tell her about the leaves and just everything that's led him here. And I'll say... He'll leave out the part of the story about Forrest, um, about what, what what he said about her for now. Mm -hmm. And we'll end with, um, there's just been a lot of confusion and a lot of questions, and it seems like there's something for me to discover, and <clears throat> it seems like the gods want me to ask you about it. Hmm. That's a very interesting omen you received. You think that we're right with our reading of it? Well, if I can speak honestly about what I know of you, you and I have had somewhat of an instructory, companion, guide sort of relationship. I think I've helped you integrate yourself into the world these last years. And I think maybe the leaves are telling you that you could do with some more time practicing your integrations, which seem to be going very well. Look at the way you held that wine glass. You've pocketed and not eaten the treats. I think you have seen more growth in you these last three months than I have seen since we've met. I think it's in part to the great friends that I've made. Mm, smile. Thank you so much for being good custodians of my dear friend, Grau. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. A question about if you were the crazy rampaging murderer that they said you were? We we didn't bring that up yet. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't bring that, that up? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I, <laughs> I thought he talked about Forrest. Sorry. You're good. I don't say that. <laughs> I say, so there's a bit of an awkward silence after, and then she says, I have some work for you. I have some uh, work for you if you would like. But, Autumn, um, well, how did Growl, I look at Growl, sort of hesitating a little bit, and then say, come to B. 
Well, growls from very far away. Yeah. No? No laughter? <laughs> but is he? <laughs> well, I... She looks at growl. Rao is his own individual person, and I have been happy to see him grow, and I would feel uncomfortable doing the things to him that one might need to do if they were researching that question. What about... What about the memories that I had? Does, does, does that... What does that mean? Hmm. Maybe you were reading his mind. Maybe you have some sort of psychic ability to connect with people. Have you ever spoken with someone else without words before? Only with Nadinas. It seems unlikely that she would speak to you to tell him, to tell you his name, but maybe, maybe there's more to you than meets the eye. Maybe there is some sort of mind to mind. Have you tried with your friends? I... I, I don't even know how I would do that. Hmm. Autumn, what do you mean when you say you would have to do things to me to find out what I am? <clears throat> well, for example, uh, we could pull a strand of your hair and you could become a bear again. We could pull a strand of that hair, and then we could get a strand of hair from a different bear. And then, so you know, the, the natural bear to the left, to the right, and your bear to our left, but keep that one closer. And then we could cast a detect object spell for bear hair. And then we would know if your hair was the hair of a true bear or not. And we could do the same thing with your human hair and another human hair. Um, that would be an easy and gentle method to ask some questions. But to get closer to the truth might be more invasive. There might be uncomfortable or painful experiments. Certainly some that might take time and be very unfun. Mm. And does it really matter? Maybe, should, Autumn, you could you speak to... You should accept yourself. Maybe you could speak to how you first uh, met Grau. Hasn't he told you the story? I don't think so, no. I don't really remember. I just... You came walking up to my tower one day. Yeah, no, that's you right. You couldn't, you were out of control. You were shifting back and forth that's between right. various forms very quickly. Yes. Um, and you were scared, and I could feel that you were scared, and I, I spent some time earning your trust, and eventually you fell asleep, and I brought you inside. Um, I brought you some food, and when you woke up, you were better, and you were a bear again, and then you left. And then you came back the next week, um, this time on your own two feet. And then we started to get to know each other. And uh, which direction did he come and go from? I'm sorry, Arrakis. Rao is having some time here to talk with me. I think your position here is as a guest listening to what Rao wishes to discuss. That's fair. I can ask questions about me. He's my friend. 
I want to make sure he's not walking over you or pushing you around. He's maybe the only person besides you who's ever not treated me like a monster. He can ask whatever he wants. What was the question, Arachne? Which direction did Grau come from and leave to in those early he days? He came from the east and left to the east. The same direction you come, along the one path that leads in and out. Okay. Did you have any more questions, Grau? Anything else I can help you with? Autumn, the gods told me to come here and they told me to talk to you. Well... Were they wrong? I have... Maybe they came... They told you to come to me because I have some work that I was hoping to find someone for and the four of you are actually the perfect group for this. Grau is going to slam the table and his human hand is making the shape of a bear claw. I no, I don't want to do work. I want to ask you a question. I asked the gods a question and the gods told me to go to you. Why would the gods make me go to you to do work for you when I asked them a question and then they asked it, that, that doesn't make any sense. You said that I'm something special and that I'm connected to the gods. I don't think you the are. gods think that I'm your worker or your servant. Perhaps, and I'm just guessing here, maybe this work for Autumn will lead us on a path that will lead you to more answers naturally. The gods can work in vague ways you know they might not say go here for answer they may mean maybe they mean go here you will happen upon something that will eventually lead you to an answer i understand how Grau feels he's been led one way and gotten no answer why don't we just go east where Grau is from coming from it's where we've just come from so what you're saying, Arrakis, is maybe the gods knew that Autumn had a job for us. Where we, by chance, by fate, run into something that's connected. I, I would say there's a, a more literal way to interpret the sign. Maybe that is go to Autumn and take this job. Or maybe it's the next stage on your journey lies at Autumn's Tower. And that's where we are. And maybe we move on from here. I... The quest I have for you, the job I have for you, involves a most unusual creature. It is not unrelated to who you are. There was okay. a mule in the town of Jaden that gave birth recently. An impossibility. It never mm. happens. This mule was gifted to the temple of Martha as a offering for her. A, a, fer, a sterile creature giving birth is clearly important to the cult of Martha. The foal or the mother was given as a gift? The mother. And of the foal? I th believe it's still on the farm. Lives. Most strange. The mother is of much interest to me. A creature unlike any other of its kind, very similar to you in that regard. I have made the church a reasonable offer through an intermediary and they have declined. I would very much like this mule, this mule who has birth in the foal. I would be happy to reward you very well for such an important task. And I think this may lead you down a path that can tell us a little bit more about who Grau is. I apologize for getting frustrated, Autumn. Okay. 
I'm always your friend. Remember that. I think we should go look for this mule. What do you guys think? Um, this is your journey, bro. We can only provide guidance. In my opinion, um, Autumn hasn't led us astray or wrong so far. Um, and if she gives counsel that acquiring this mother mule will give us more answers, then it seems like sound counsel. I mean, she has been keeping animals here. And I, I kind of like, I don't know, is that golden retriever dog here? Mm-hmm. It's outside, um, but it's here. Well, I'll, I'll kind of like, I'll wave in its direction. Like, uh, I, I suspect she is studying that dog out there because, mm. you know, similar matters. Is, would that be correct, Autumn? She'll nod her head. What happens, Grau, if we go there and we bring back this mule and it doesn't give you any answers? Are you going to be mad at Autumn? No. It wouldn't be her fault. Okay. And uh, just to play devil's advocate here, should we not fear the retribution of Martha, or if not Martha herself, then her minions, stealing this uh, miracle from the church may uh, bend some people out of shape? Stealing may not be the route we have to go. But, um, Nadinus is on our side, supposedly, so the gods will have to figure it out. Martha will forgive you. She forgives everyone for everything. And of our priests? Maybe well, they're too old to follow. Maybe they'll heal you to death. <laughs> well, I'm up for it, if you guys are. Sounds like an adventure to me. Very well. Right. Let's go steal a mule. Yeah. Well, take tonight. Um, You can leave in the morning. I know it's a a hectic journey through the swamp. Uh, I have some more matters to attend. I was wondering, you wouldn't happen to have the the bones of any undead lying around, would you? As a component? Yeah, some chips. I I think so. Thank you. I'll bring something down in I'm happy and to pay. Five minutes later, she will hand you five castings worth of undead bones. Thank you. Great. What spells this for? Scare. Mm. What does a scare do? Or do you want to wait until you use it? I'll wait until I use it because I'm not actually sure. It, it's Ooh. either useless or really good. I'm not sure. Fun. It's really good. <clears throat> we'll see. Well, with that, Autumn will leave you in the party hanging out and rest the rest of the day. Make up any plans that you need, if you need to. But otherwise, uh, you just gotta get to Keygate and then to Jaden, steal a mule, and then go back the 88 miles back to the castle tower. How hard could it be? Sounds pretty straightforward to me. Yeah, what's the word, Jaden? Is that on the way to Sakuma? No, way. it's um, it's still within the oh, it's right near kingdom here. of Hornstead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you pass yeah, through Jaden all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's a common place. Wait, but Imperial territory. Did we not do something bad in Jaden? Yes. I mean, you, that's how was it Swamp Side that you guys got arrested in for killing? I think that was Swamp Side. We did oh, we, we did some thievery in a market in Jaden, which <laughs> we might we do it again. That, yeah, we got away with that. That was that was Jaden's where the Copper family or whatever's from, right? Didn't no. we save their supplies? Where are they at? The Brick family, you mean? The, yeah, brick, the brick family, family. or Keygate is their They're seat of Keygate. power. Their Keygate, got it. Mm-hmm. I'm not allowed near their daughter anymore. A misunderstanding with a ring. Probably shouldn't mm-hmm. have been allowed near her in the first place. <laughs> well, I'm just a thief. <laughs> sure. <laughs> thief of innocence. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well... <laughs> well, it sounds like there's no more... Uh, well... 
after autumn goes and everyone's hanging around, you've had your, your meals and your lunches and your dinners and all that jazz, and the party's getting ready to bed down for the night. Um, Growl, is there anything you'd want to say to the party? Were you content with this outcome? Are you frustrated? What's, what's your deal? I think Growl is going to trust the process because he doesn't really fully understand how this god shit works, and he looks up to both Autumn and Arrakis. They've made sound points to him so maybe he's a bit weary but he feels like this is the way to go um but as autumn leaves the room growl will very quickly and very savagely devour the treat that she gave him the bear at heart she'll come down check on the party in a little while give arrakis the bones he needs and she'll quickly pull you aside when everyone else is busy with some other side task. And um, she'll put an arm on your shoulder, pulling you from the rest of the group out into the garden a little bit where the golden retriever sits and is looking at the, the fountain still. And she'll say to you, like the mule that was a miracle of doing something it's not supposed to do, you too, Grau, are seemingly a miracle of doing things that people would not understand. But the mule might prove as a nice test case for us. This is a, a delicate area in human society that I did not want to talk to you about, but I see you've progressed so much. And if you are truly having questions about your identity, um, maybe you can try having a child. You have human, orc, gnome, and bear forms. If one of those is your true form, you should be able to have children, no? I... I suppose... Does that make sense? I should be able this to make... This is an awkward territory for some people. Just I, floating it out there that this might lead you to answers. Of course, just a thought. Anyway, um, I'm going to go, or now, I'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye. Night, Autumn. Good night. Uh, Growl will sit with that and ponder that. And uh, the problem is, before, when he was a bear having kids it was just like so the problem is male bears don't take care of their kids right mm. so he i mean like he maybe has a vague feeling of maybe having had a bear mom or something but he doesn't really have a concept of what it's like to have a child but now that he's like he has all this like humanoid stuff and he's been to like human cities and seen humans interact with their children and the gnome and their their kid, he's like, yeah, humans do this way differently. Um, and he's now flooding his brain with the implications of what it would be like to if if, if he tried to have a child and it was a human child, what would that mean? And he's just now understanding that there's a lot more to that than a male bear would normally think. And uh, he's very overwhelmed by this. He's going to turn into bear form and just kind of pace around, and he's very stressed. Wow. Well, with that, we can just go to the next day. The party wakes up, rested and refreshed. Um, if you have any questions for Autumn about the, the mission, now's the time to do it, but otherwise, finding the miracle mule in Jaden, easy peasy, right? It's How hard could it sure be? People, how hard could it be? I mean, people must be looking to come and see this mule, right? It's a miracle. People, I mean, it's, it's going to be advertised. We won't even yeah. need to find it. It'll be, they're going to tell us where it is, so. I think we leave, you know, um, never happy to have to walk through the swamp, but that's the only difficult part of the journey. Make sure we don't get any gremlins or whatever. Mm -hmm. Make sure we um, stock up on some, like, berries and stuff from to supplement our rations. And then yeah. like, Keygate will buy small rations, and then it's a, a couple of days to Jaden, I think. Easy peasy, right? Not a problem. 
and see what could go wrong. Uh, I could lose my notebook. Here it is. Excellent. All right. So with no further ado, the party leaves to go to Keygate and Jaden. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. On the way there, I want to speak to Ren and August if they're chatting to each other. Yeah, I think so, we'll do. Yeah. We just yeah. chat away. We would have been talking about, like, how do you... Uh, let's say we're actually talking when you come up to us. Yeah. Um, well, how do you feel about this, um, August? I think that it's fine um i just i worry that when we get there what are we what are we doing this for you know what are you talking about the mule yeah yeah we're talking about the mule well let's just i was gonna ask you you know what do you make of you guys knew august before i met autumn before i met her what do you make of her I never really met I mean, someone quite like her i'll kind of turn to august and I'll say well i mean she helped us out when we were in a hard spot but don't really know much about her she we were kind of a charity case yeah you ever met a powerful wizard that cares so much for everyone um no i can honestly say that i haven't to be honest yeah. with you to be frank every single wizard i've met have been, has been a self-serving and ren will pause himself before he says like the worst slur in Arcadia, <sighs> whatever that is, yeah, <laughs> whatever, whatever calling like someone a goblin fucker is in like high elvish, goblin fucker, you you hit the nail right there, yeah, because there's something that happened, something she said that really stuck with me. Uh, <laughs> when I was asking, you know, whether the priests would be a problem if we stole from them, she was like, Oh, what are they gonna do, heal you to death? With like a little bit of, you know, if she's so charitable and so kind, should she not kind of revere Martha? Should she not think that these priests who heal the sick and wounded would be like, you know, to be looked up to? Is that not kind of in line with the character she's been presenting to us? It could have been a slip of the mask, maybe a touch of arrogance slipping through an otherwise friendly, helpful mask. What do you think, August? Being paranoid again I just worry that we're gonna get there and steal this mule anger a bunch of clerics for nothing her doing some tests do you think it's gonna do something we don't have to steal it we can investigate and find out if there is an offer we could make maybe if we offer them information about Grau Maybe we just don't even have to bring the mule back. Maybe this is the next path forward. Maybe the Martha clerics can help us instead. Maybe Grau needs to talk to the mule. Maybe. That's true. Maybe Grau needs to fuck the mule. <gasps> <gasps> Maybe. Who knows what that would make. Ren, like, has a brief moment of, like, he's like, oh, that could be it. And then he, like, is... No, his brain sure like flip, goes through the rolodex of forms and then imagines like how that would work with a mule and his face goes from oh like very quickly no. <laughs> um well anyway i i don't care so much about the mule but i'm just saying that i was getting i i get a weird vibe from autumn i've never come across anyone so selfless so kind and conscientious and understanding of everyone's issues you know she's just like a little bit i don't know too woke you know or something it's a coin of phrase <laughs> too woke yeah she's so like aware <laughs> of biases and like you know don't speak over growl this is his turn to speak like no other npc is like that i say slightly out of character she's I... just giving me the heebie-jeebies that's all it did. I noticed that too, actually, Arrakis, and it made my skin crawl. There you it go. felt like she was insinuating that we are not to be trusted, that we are not treating him as an equal. And to be fair, in the beginning, we weren't. Um, I think you know now we do. She doesn't even care about me anymore now that I've turned back to a human. Oh, yeah, because you were interesting. She didn't talk before. to me at all. 
Now that you're he didn't human. even look at you. Yeah. Bastard. Now oh, hang on. Grau's up there and he he trusts her, so we need to put stock into that. We I do. Think we need to talk to these Martha clerics behind or with Grau's consent. Probably with his consent, actually. Yeah, I'm not going behind his back. No, I don't think Autumn a... can help us. It doesn't seem like she knows anything, and she's just trying to get more animals to experiment on. You already talked about she's got a dog up there yelping, right? Who knows what white elves do with dogs. Ten sessions later. <laughs> okay, I attack Autumn. <laughs> this is the moment. Get her with the shadow dagger. Yeah. She'd find me easily. Okay, yeah, no, we keep going. We're not having some All big right. conspiracy theory behind Gras back. I just wanted to see just, what they made. There's of it. an NPC a little bit of role play. who's nice and, and it's suspicious. is considerate of people, and you've been yeah. playing with me for so many years that this has never happened, and you and think now yes. she must be a monster. I would have already She's attacked nice. if this NPC was a dwarf, by the way. That would have crossed her over a line, and I wouldn't have believed it. <laughs> when she spoke <laughs> up to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Can't be letting dwarves talk to you like that. No. Uh, we will get to the town of Jaden, and it's a little, little town out here. You know, a big village, a little town, populations in the very low thousands. Not much going on here, but sure enough, I mean, you walk through this place on your way to the tower. But now that you're coming back and actually stopping to look around, you're going to notice that there are paintings on the sides of buildings of mules, like fresh paintings. And there's Amazing. a lot of them. And uh, yeah, if mule. you had actually been staying in this town instead of camping in the woods to save money, you probably would have heard about this miracle mule. But now that you're walking around, like it's the talk of the town. Now that you're paying attention and cued in, like, fuck yeah, there, there's a miracle mule in are the people temple like, here. Are people like partying as well. Is there, is no, like a, it's oh. been here a little while. It's been here long enough that like, you can only party for so long. But, but, is it is somebody, a thing. Is, but has somebody set up like um like a drink stand at a Christmas market or something with, with like mule themed drinks, like Moscow mules <laughs> or something, or something like that. You know, so you can get your mule themed drink. I would yet. Mm. Um but I love where your mind it's is a going. Missed opportunity is what that is. Oh, you should have gotten in on the ground floor for this. You could have this made where, money. If, if we'd have been cap because you gotta spend money to make money. If you'd have if we'd have spent the money to stay in the town, we would have known about this. We could have been mm -hmm. rich now. Could have this been is rich. What Ruckus is thinking is he's what a bummer. Past these. Since the party is poor, as we're walking through town, I'm on the lookout for a, an easy pickpocket. Well, the easy pickpocket is the one thing they are selling. It's not mule themed merchandise, but there's somebody on the gates entering and exiting town, probably scattered throughout town too, that are selling Martha amulets. Simple pieces of copper bound into circles. Martha's amulets are technically gold circles interlocked, but these like little copper circles interlocked, um, sold on a little necklace so that if you too want a Martha symbol, you can wear it. And hey, if you want to be really trendy, you can just turn it on its side and hang them up and down, you know, and you don't have to go side by side. Sure, that's the way it's always depicted on the walls of the temples, but fashion is fashion. And sometimes, you know, you want the you want to draw the attention down the nape of the neck and down the chest. So you want to stack that vertically. Um, mm -hmm. I will buy I will buy one of these, by the way. Fuck yeah. How much are we talking? There are three silver. Okay, I buy one. I now have two necklaces. I have the the Robin Wing necklace that Gra made me, and I've got this Martha necklace as well. I will um, be interested in buying a necklace. Um, I'm like, oh, what are these? Martha necklaces? You hear the temple in town? Miracle mule donated to the temple by the good farmer whose mule gave birth out of nowhere. That guy? Blessed by the gods, I swear. Had a, a magic mule all along. Didn't even know it. And then he gifted it to the temple. Because you know what? The goddess of life and creation and healing, she's what it's all about. She's here to forgive your sins. She's here to give you life. She's here to help you through your days. And if you want to show your appreciation for the great goddess Martha, you should buy one of these Martha amulets. 10% of the proceeds go to the Church of Martha. 10%? Wow, that is such a generous tithe. Um, I would absolutely love to buy one of those. Although, if you ask me... I don't know, maybe I'm a cynical kind of guy. I don't know, like, feels like 
feels too good to be true, but you know, I want to go see that mule myself. Uh, how, you how can much... go on down and see the mule, but you know, you probably want to be wearing these one of these necklaces. There's a lot of viewers. You're gonna have to elbow for space. Followers of Martha probably able to get a little better view. Hey, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, I'll take uh, I'll take uh, three of those, please. Um, well, as I'm nine silver. As I'm panning over the nine silver, I'm paying really careful attention to where he puts his money. Oh yeah. Well, he'll take the silver. And he pours out, opens the little drawer and just scoops it into the drawer and shuts it. And then, you know, stands with his crotch at drawer level. Oh. Why do they call them your drawers? Because they sit at drawer level. Um, I think it has something to do with the action. To draw. Like drawing a sword. Yeah. Like you, you draw a thing. So I think, I think that might be it, Neil. I don't know if, I don't think they call so them you, drawers. You draw, okay, that's, okay. I'll take it. I don't. I don't think it's. I don't, no. I don't think they call them drawers because they're at. Because they're at drawer cock height. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we. I don't think we name things after cock. Well, we do call them cod pieces. So. Um, uh, anyway, it's after a fish. <laughs> sorry, I tried to make that situation <laughs> awkward, and I think I. I think I succeeded. Um, <laughs> Not in the right way. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm paying attention. Is he also carrying yeah. a money pouch? Is he? Does he have a guard? What? Where? Where, where is he? Where uh, he doesn't is he? have a guard. He's just hanging out on the street. You know, he brought this oh. table from home. Probably, he probably has to carry it back home and here every day. And then he's got a couple of amulets just laid out in front of him. Um, he's got like twelve laid out here, and he just handed one and sold it to you. Yeah. After I buy it, I'm doing like the classic person who doesn't know when a transaction has ended thing. And I'm just I'm just risen them up. I'm like, okay, wait. So where, where where were these made? Were they made ethically in like the local area? Like, does does this funding go to support um, like local people? You know, I ten percent of all proceeds go to the Church of Martha. Obviously, I mean, what, where would we be without our mothers, right? And the greatest mother of all. Yeah. How much How much do you buy them for? Well, I make this. Actually, my wife makes them, and I, I come out here and sell them. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. You guys are metal workers. Well, you guys must be. Well, you guys must be doing pretty good to be able to. Do you, do you smelt the copper? Or you just heat it and, uh, you know, tap it into the shape. You're a blacksmith. No, 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 no. We, we, you know, part of the part. You know, a society uh, often has like lots of trade that works in it. And so the 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 actual um, copper rings uh, come from somewhere else, uh, and then we just get the two rings and we, you know, we we tack them together with that little pin that you see between them. Uh, so. Oh, that's. That's, that's that's super interesting. And yeah, wait, two pins so, right there. Wait, shouldn't they shouldn't they be like made of gold? And like every like I want to say like five to ten seconds. I'm very surreptitiously moving, slowly getting slowly on moving the around the table. And it's like just you a stage natural three clinger here, guys. Just, and I'm and I'm I'm like I'm locked in eye contact. And every signal he gives me that the conversation is over, I'm like, don't care, <laughs> keep talking. Uh, yeah, I'm and he's trying to like in. hawk other people on the street, and you ask him a question, and he's like, you know, necklaces, net. And soon you find yourself more or less on the same side of the table with him. And you're talking, and he's definitely trying to like yell at people in the street and just giving you like, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh -huh. I start helping him sell amulets. I'm like bought in. I'm like handmade local produce, ten percent goes tithing to the thing, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm. Can I, are you okay with me help me? Let me charisma, Ten of a, let me charisma oh. check here. Okay. Oh. Boom. Oof. Oof. You're just weird. Oof. Well, you do not help him sell any necklaces, but... Am I driving away his customers? Uh, yes. Accidentally. But Perfect. he doesn't realize it. Or more importantly, he thinks he honestly thinks you're trying to help him. And he is enjoying your help. And he's just thinking it's bad luck that no customers are coming by or that they're all like staying away. Um, but he's really appreciative of your help. And after you stop badgering with questions, you start hawking wares. You know, this is great. You got somebody else to help me with this. You're picking up on the propaganda. It's going well. And yet time is passing. What has happened to the rest of the party? Are you all moved on? Yeah, I mean, I bought one and then I went to walk <laughs> off. I'm in the pub. I didn't yep. buy one. All right. Well. Yeah, I'm just looking around. Nothing special. Cool. Some time passes. How much time do you want to pass, Jamie? 
Uh, I would probably spend, it wouldn't take me, this could happen, this heist that I'm in the middle of pulling off could happen over the course of about 15 minutes, to be honest with mm. you. If I'm, uh, if I'm keeping them mm -hmm. going, because basically all I'm trying to do is at some point someone's going to come up and do it and I'm going to make the sale. I'm going to try to be the guy who does the sale, right? And uh, during that sale, right? Let's, does anyone come up is the question. Well, you rolled a 12, so and the first hour passes without Jesus. anyone wanting to come by. You know, you, you really oh. botched the charisma check. That's a, that's a terrible oh. roll, Jamie. I'm um, going to say if, if it takes more than like 20 minutes, Ren would give up because it's not worth that oh. effort. Okay. And he would just and he would just be like, well, I guess I guess I've got no luck here. Uh, I'll say, well, it was an Thanks absolute pleasure help, to buddy. meet you. What was your What was your name? And I'll go to give a handshake, but being awkward, I'll kind of go like, oh, and then I'll transition it into a hug. And so as ah. he's like reaching out, and that's when I try to reach into a pocket and grab something. And I'm just I'm All going right. for it. Give me the pickpockets check. I'll give you a hug. Uh, he'll tell you that his name is uh, Gus. Um, pickpockets. Pick pocket. Pickpockets. Boom. 81. Yes, you will succeed. And you will pull out of his pocket. Yeah, so sorry. You will right. pull out of his pockets four amulets on cords that are not on the table for sale. And when you get far enough away from him, you can look at them and these ones are made out of gold. These are not the cheap copper ones he's selling. These are the golden ones that he keeps oh. in his pocket for better oh. sales. Golden Hold on. Martha Amulet. Nice. That's pretty mm -hmm. good. X4. Easy. Each Easy one luck. of these should be worth... Like oh. it's each one is the weight of four gold coins, but considering the the work that goes into them to put them together and everything, you could probably sell each one for five gold, if you were if you were selling with them like he was. Amazing. Um, but if you just want to trade them to a blacksmith or a goldsmith, a goldsmith will give you four gold. Yeah, I'll write three and a half uh, gold for these. Mm -hmm. Three point five to five G. I'll write down on the sheet. So right. um, I join um, August in the pub. Right, and I'm mm -hmm. imagining I'm making my way through crowds of people talking about this magical donkey mm -hmm. that's in this town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, having just come from the swamp, obviously, I say to August, I say, have you heard there's, a, there's an ogre in the swamp? Apparently he's coming for the donkey. What do you mean? No. Yeah. Yeah, he's saying that there's too many people come here to like look at to the town to see the donkey, and they're kind of like encroaching on his land. And he's going to come into the town. And he's going to kill the donkey, <sighs> so that all the people leave, and then he can get his swamp back. Oh well, then we got to get the donkey out of here. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. That we'd be doing the right thing, and think of the hijinks we could get into along the way. <laughs> Maybe a dragon. You run <laughs> yeah. into. He says, "Yeah, I... you can have sex with one." I don't know. I think I should also talk to the donkey. Yeah, oh, I absolutely. didn't see you there, Growl. He might have some good jokes, even. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe some novel <laughs> comparisons of vegetables to ogres. I uh -huh. think that you should go and talk to the donkey, Growl. I agree. But I also think that you should talk to the clerics and explain to them about your unique situation. I don't think I should be explaining to them that I'm a druid, right? Maybe. Mm. Well, what do you think, Arrakis? Wait, sorry, explaining to who? About being a druid. Clerics? I think he should talk to the clerics about who he is. No, I don't think that's a good idea. I, I think that's a... I, that's I think what we talked about on the way here, Arrakis. Yeah, but speaking to them about being a druid... No, he doesn't have to tell them about being a druid. He can tell them about being a... There, man. Yeah, that I'm not as. I think that's up to Graf. That's what he wants to do. But these clerics here, you know, they know who they work for. I'd be careful about that particular fact. The clerics work for the gods. They don't work for any nation. That'd be insane. 
Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. <clears throat> yeah. Keep on Val's back, say it that way. You can do what you want, Growl, but my opinion is I think you should tell the clerics who you are. Not, you don't have to include the druid part, but include the part about you being half bear, half man. I mean, <laughs> perhaps ask the donkey how the clerics have treated them. Because maybe they're, they're, maybe they're nice guys, but the donkey might be the best person to tell you. I, I also Good think idea. I should talk to the donkey first. I agree. Okay. Well, the party gathered together. I don't know if um, Ren had anything else to add to here, but you can go see the donkey right now. It's on display. Yeah, I'll get to see it. All right. The party heads to the temple. All righty. Now, we are close to ending time here. Um, if you think this might be a moment of high hijinks, then we should probably call it here. But if you think that this is just going to be a regular conversation without any great hijinks, we can do the temple right now. Well. Just Talk to the donkey. Well, so, I have yeah. to prep the spell anyway, so we'd have to wait a night. Oh, okay. Mm. Sure, we'll wait a night and we'll talk to the donkey. Yeah. I don't think there I truly don't think there's any crazy shit that's gonna happen if he talks to a donkey. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never and if we can't, and if there is, that's a good cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are looking for The next day, we arrive at the temple dedicated to Martha in the small town of Jaden. It's a lovely little temple. There's priests and priestesses standing around. There's a cleric up there, the high cleric, an old man, as old as time. He's sitting cross-legged uh, at the back of the temple on a raised dais. And before him, down on the ground level, the rest of the throngs of people are is a mule doesn't look particularly impressive or unusual but gathered in a semicircle around the creature are the throngs the masses of the onlookers and between the masses and the mule are some priests and priestesses who have volunteered to just form a perimeter so that no one you know harasses or hurts the mule the last thing we'd want is for it to be crushed to death in like a mob panic um, but people are coming up they're offering it carrots, they're offering it lettuce, they're offering it whatever little snacks they, like they can. Uh, they're not bowing, but they are trying to reach out, trying to pet it, trying to give it food, um, throwing coins at its feet, and making prayers to it. Like, they might stand and, and make some sort of, you know, Martha circles around her chest prayer motion. Um, and there are pews behind that people can walk back into, and if you want to, like, sit and do a prayer where you're not going to get knocked by the people trying to get to the mule, you can pray in the pews or in any of the little alcoves if you need more privacy. Okay. Um, tell me, so for, for speak with animals, mm -hmm. what does it look like from the outside for people that don't, that aren't involved? So like, if I were to kneel down and just start talking to the donkey, does it look like I'm talking to him? Once the spell is cast and you're communicating with the donkey, you can comprehend and communicate with any warm or cold-blooded normal or giant animal that is not mindless. You're able to ask questions of and receive answers from the creature. Um, but you cast it on one creature, so I think you are more enchanting the creature to understand you. Yeah. And you'd understand it. So you would speak in common. Yeah. I suppose. And it would speak in rays and barks. But honestly, someone coming rays. to like a holy animal like this and just starting to talk to him is probably a very common sight around this place, huh? Probably. The most difficult part of this would be the actual casting of the spell mm -hmm. because it takes somatic and verbal components. And in an area where there's a cleric and other priests and priestesses, um, someone's going to notice that you're actually casting a spell. I don't know if that matters to you. They might be unhappy if someone is casting a spell at their donkey without their permission, or maybe the cleric has spellcraft and knows what spell you're casting and doesn't care. Um, yeah. It's kind of up to you to judge the 
oddness of this. Well, that's that's not that's not a thing that Corral is good at. <laughs> um, I think maybe before we go in, I would have talked to Arrakis about how to do this, mm -hmm. and um, got his opinion on this. Do you? I, uh, oh, it's gone. Sorry. Um, if I cast the spell to talk to the donkey, will they notice me casting the spell? Do you think they will care? Can you not cast it on yourself before you go in? It doesn't last very long. It lasts like eight minutes. Do you have to cast it on the donkey? I have or... to cast it on the donkey, yes. Uh, what's the range? Actually, sorry. This is not true. I think this is self-cast. Yeah. Because the spell reads, this spell empowers the priest to comp comprehend and communicate with any warm or cold-blooded animal. Yeah, but the AoE is one animal within 30 feet of you. Oh, okay. No, oh, within 30 feet. Yeah. That's not very far, is it? Yeah. Um, I say they'll probably notice you casting the spell, yeah. You have to speak. I do. I'd be careful. They, um, <laughs> you know, maybe don't take kindly to people casting spells randomly in crowded places. You think I can cast it without them noticing? I'm not really sure. It's it's all. I don't really understand how I do it or or, or what happens when I do it. You might need to get Bren and August to make a distraction for you. Once again, him doing nothing. <laughs> well, what do you want me to do? I'm, you're the, yeah, he's the rogue. You're his buddy. You need to make a distraction. <laughs> I'll make sure everything goes okay, and I'll step in if it goes to hell. Where's your thaumaturgy? Where's your flashing lights? What's going on there, bud? I thought you were well, a mage. That's just, that's just casting another spell. That's not going to help. Oh. oh, what's this? I have a whole spell book filled with amazing what things. What if you cast it, I don't know, let me... perception filter on the fucking guy to go in? That's a good idea. <laughs> that's a good idea. I still think perception filter might not work because it's like a unique action casting a spell, but that's definitely a good point. Mr. Mutin, I, August does not suggest that. No I way. think, um... No, I suggest No, it. Mr. Moon, no, fair play, yeah, that's a good idea. We should do that, 100%. Well, here's the thing, it lets you blend in with... I think maybe casting a spell is not blending in. That feels... But, but I, could, I could cast that before, you know, in private, and then he can go in try and go no but i think him being in that oh. filter like the second he's like standing there everyone's like oh there's just a dude here it's like there's a dude waving his hands and talking and then they're like yeah. he is now yeah but it can yeah. get him in without being seen per se and now he's already passed like the quote-unquote vibe check and he's in the crowd you're right it's just, um, it was a stupid can... idea no no it is a good idea we can get good into idea. the crowd and then we can go do other stuff well what what will we do what it... i don't know we, could, we could just pretend to have an argument I think that's yeah, actually the best thing. That's a good idea. Yeah. Is this, in fact, this is a technique that actually worked to save my brother from a fight in Poland. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there, was, um, there was a bunch of Polish guys who did not like my brothers. So my two brothers uh, started talking extra Irish and then uh, pretended to like get into a fight with each other. But like, you know, they grouped together so they were hitting each other. And yeah. the Polish guys were like, these guys are fucking crazy and left. <laughs> 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 nice. Um, All right. Yeah, I, I think, think there's a great plan. Sort of distraction. Yeah, we'll just get into a fight. Yeah, and it plays into it plays into Rand's skills. It'll be good. Yeah. All right. What's the plan? Uh, we're gonna get into a fight, and when we start fighting, you do your thing. Okay. We're, me and Rand are gonna have an argument, and it's gonna be like a family feud. While we're causing a distraction, you're gonna get up there. You're gonna have a perception filter on you. People aren't gonna be looking for a dude casting. Yep. You'll slip in ideally not into the mule but to talk to the mule <laughs> okay <laughs> depending on how generous neil wants to be i could have learned perception filter for today um but it kind of sounded like we already sure. slept and went here yeah okay so thanks I'll well do. yeah i mean he would have made the plan yesterday That's yeah, fine. yeah yeah real quick um while, while preparing uh speak with animals just to be sure i'm also going to prep calm animals and animal friendship Nice. Okay. Animal friendships, a base spell. It's a great spell. <laughs> but just so you know, it's, the casting time is an hour. Yeah. Um, 
It's just in case we get into a situation. It feels like the kind of day where I should prep exactly sure. these spells. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Love it. Okay. All right. So in the temple we go. I've already cast Perception Rackus. Filter. Yeah, just before we leave. You cast Perception on Growl. Yes, before we leave whatever building. Got it. In. Yeah. And are you going to the temple too, Arrakis? I am going as well, yes. Wow. Okay. He's just going to and... talk to the donkey guys. What kind of wackiness could possibly happen? It's donkey time. I give everyone who doesn't have a thing of Martha a uh, one of the copper ones that I bought. Mm. Ah, excellent. The party is adorned in copper necklaces of Martha. And that's the problem. The... That's why we're getting in a fight. I'm not wearing it. Uh... Wait, no, we want it to be a well... family feud because we don't want people to think that, like, oh, Oh, these guys need to be put in jail. It's just like, oh, these guys are just having a disagreement. It got out of hand. Yeah, the disagreement just... will be, hey, why aren't you wearing your fucking thing? Yeah. We're here at fucking House of Martha. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So the deal here is the two of you want to make your fight seem real enough that it's going to distract everybody without seeming so real that they're going to imprison you or like jail you or actually attack you violently, right? You want to walk that line um, of conflict. And you two have some pretty good conflicts between you. You've been fighting with each other for years. So why don't you both make me charisma checks at plus six because you honestly fight with each other all the fucking time. <laughs> all right. And uh, at least one Nine of you hit. needs to pass this, preferably both of you. 1d20 plus six plus eight. <laughs> okay. You ready? Wow. Boom. We nail it. Nice. Boom. Wow. Excellent nice. rolls here, everybody. Yeah. You two have a fight, and it's not too hard to conjure up those emotions, conjure up those feelings, that loud action. And sure enough, everyone is sort of looking that way. And Growl, hanging out in the crowd, eyes upon the donkey, can see the high cleric is looking that way, can see the, the bodyguards who are like shielding the crowd are looking back over their shoulder um, in the direction of the fight to see what's going on. The people on his left and his right are kind of distracted. Now's your moment, Growl. Cast your spell. Growl casts speak with animals on the donkey. I don't give a fuck about Excellent. this donkey, and I don't care about Martha. I'm not wearing that thing. <laughs> you never, ever respect these family's traditions. How dare you come into this house and disrespect the people here? And This is when I shove you. Yeah. <laughs> the high cleric you the good stand old, up like, and say, Peace! Overhand, Peace though. in the I house do it of Martha! I actually, I turn... And angrily, I yell at the priest. He doesn't know peace. I mean, sorry, father. He doesn't know peace. He doesn't know peace. He's just got violence and anger and disobedience in his peace. heart. Peace, both of you. You want to see anger, and I'll run up to you and I'll like. I am calm. <laughs> I am. This calm. is a moment for divinity and respect of the gods, not in fighting amongst family. Please take your matters outside. He does not deserve to be in here. He's not wearing the <laughs> amulet. Look. The crowd starts saying, get him out. Get him out. Uh, both of you, please make me <laughs> saving throws versus spell. Uh-oh. Boom. I failed. I failed. You are both held person by the cleric. <laughs> uh, and then you are dragged and left outside, you know, in a comfortable spot where you're not going to hurt yourself nice. by the local um, support staff. I slide for the is why you take hold person every day. Every day, um, yeah. Wait, are you saying that in... that means he has less spells now, so he's an easier target? True. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. We got him. His <laughs> primary defensive spell for the day. In the meantime. Yeah. Okay. Growl is going to kneel down next, or squat down next to the donkey, and kind of go, you know, eye to eye with him. Donkey's big eye just sort of stares dully. As he chews the latest thing to be have been put in his mouth, which is probably your carrot. Hey, hey, my hoofed friend. Hi. You can hear me, right? Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Overstimulated. Uh. <laughs> Very understandable. Humans do that a lot. Yeah. You have so many things hanging everywhere and standing everywhere and they're talking so much and there's so many of them and they do so many different things, right? Yep. And if you're just standing out in an open field or a forest, you don't have to deal with any of them and everything is calm, but 
Everything's so rushed and fast when you're around them. Yep. It's not nice. No. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm I'm not a human. The donkey will stop chewing. His eye will move from sort of wherever it was going more directly towards your face. Everyone else will hear a <laughs> coming from the donkey, but you will hear a you look like a human. Do I smell like a human? It sort of starts to buck around and it kicks back out behind it. Uh, There's a five. Doesn't hit anything. Um, and the, the crowd will sort of pull back and, and everyone will go, Oh my god, what's going on? And the priest will come and the, the cleric will come and like try to soothe the animal and they'll all try. Uh, but the donkey will call out, Bear! Bear! It's okay. Bear! It's okay. I'm not gonna hurt. I'm not gonna eat you. I'm not gonna hurt you. It's okay. The nostrils flare. No? I was gonna hold out his hand over the donkey. Uh, over the donkey's nose as to give him a calming gesture. It's okay. I don't mean to hurt you. Yeah, the donkey will kind of walk towards you as you do this gesture. Everyone else is a little scared because the donkey's in panic and they notice that you're like whispering to it and it's coming towards you. And the priest will like instinctively move to block the crowd but like let you through because clearly the donkey has chosen you for something <laughs> special. Um, and the high cleric is watching you closely. He's got his eyes on you but you are being... You're allowed to have your moment. Yes. The Church of Martha is a great place with great people. Um, Donkey, clearly, clearly these people all think that you're special, right? Suppose. That you're not like other donkeys. Oh. Do they treat you okay? I don't okay? work anymore. I don't have to pull a stick no more. That is nice. They do make us work a lot. Yep. But do you have any idea why they don't make you work? Nope. Uh, you remember anything happening to you before they took you away from work? They took my baby away. They did. Yep. They told... They took right away from me. Or she was weaned. That's not nice. No. Took my milk. Put it in a bucket. They say that you weren't supposed to have this baby, and that's why it's special. But you're you're, oh. you're saying nothing. Nothing happened to you that wouldn't have happened to any other of your kind. I threw a shoe. You threw a shoe? Yep. Where? At what? In the field. You just threw it around? At nothing? Came off my foot. Oh. Um. Mm -hmm. I was gonna suppress the urge to ask if those shoes are uncomfortable. And, um... He, he knows he's got limited time. What? You don't know where they took your baby, do you? Nope. If we could help you get out of here and get your baby back, do you think you would like that? The head perks up. Yes! I think we can help you. We can get you to At a friend point. of mine's. That Arrakis, you're still in here. I think I'm on like Growl's I'm imagining. Pretty focused on what's happening with this donkey. Yeah, I... I think he might be a little lost in the moment. But Arrakis, you're aware that Growl's whispering to the donkey has quieted much of the crowd, and people are straining to hear what is being said, and people are being hushed and shushed. And you, who know more or less what's going on, and are positioned close enough that you can kind of hear the gist, and you already know the plan. Uh, you can hear Rao saying these things about we can get you out of here. Um, and you're aware that the crowd is has variable ability to hear these words. Do I feel like 
I'm close enough, and that's why I can hear, and the majority of people wouldn't be able to make it out. Um, yeah, but there are people who are also at your closeness, or even closer, perhaps. So, um, if you're... You're just in a position where you're aware that Growl's words might be overheard by some people, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, Growl, I think, is pretty in the moment. I'm not really sure. The crowd is so still much. pressing around him. Yeah, I'm not sure so much I can do about it, really. I, I act as a friend trying to keep people off him. Mm -hmm. I try and I try and push some space around him, at least, so they don't just, like, oh. rush in and... Yeah, the other priests have helped to do that, too. Growl, please, please continue. Okay, I think, I think me and my friends can find your baby, and we can, we can bring you to a friend that can help you. Help me, please! I want my baby. We can, we can do that. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to get you out of here. Okay, tell me, where, where do they bring you at night? Barn. Nowhere out the back. it is. Out the back. Down the street. Down the street. Yep. Smells like me. And do they watch you at night? Does anyone watch you? Yep. Yep. There's a guard at the barn. One He's guard. He's me hay all night long. And it's just one, yes? Yep. Okay. Okay, that's good. We will try to find your baby. Do you know anything about where it could be? Hmm. The mule thinks to itself. I don't think a mule would recognize, definitely not writing, probably not signs or sigils or markings. They wouldn't know street names. I don't know how a mule would give you directions mm -hmm. to where it came from. Very confusing. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, yeah. we will find your baby and I think we will get you too. The donkey brays a uh, bray of glee that you're doing this, which also signals the fact that you can't understand the donkey anymore. Yeah. We are now at eight minutes and 35 seconds. So we've just crossed that threshold. I think Not Growl... my conversation with Arrakis, you would have been plenty of time. I think Growl will notice that everyone's kind of looking at him. And he yeah. will look up mm -hmm. and he will say, um, the, the donkey has spoken to me. He demands carrots. Carrots! <laughs> and people will shower the donkey with the carrots that they have. They will throw, they will toss, they will jab in the donkey's direction. And it is all the guards can do to keep the onlookers at bay. And this is where we will end was, our session. I was for genius, today. yeah. Wonderful. Right that here. Genius. In town. Donkey in tow. Well, donkey around. Oh my, well, this is going to be easy. We sleep. Um, we before sleep. we exit. Oh. I want to do a quick round about the party, and I know we've talked a little bit about the the autumn issue, but it feels like it feels like there might be something more there to say. So, yeah, Renatus, how you feeling about our our elf wizard friend? Um, it's difficult. In some ways, I trust her less than I trust Zara because Zara is predictable. Autumn is not. There are questions about Autumn that I have um, mm -hmm. out of character and in character. Renatus doesn't see, because he doesn't understand wizardry, he doesn't understand what her benefit is. Usually, People act for their benefit or in pursuit of their ideals, right? So mm -hmm. Autumn wants to look like she's acting towards her ideals, is Ren's feeling, but is clearly acting for her own benefit. Mm. Mm. You think that she might be a little duplicitous? Yes. Yeah. Does not there... fully trust her. 
do the questions you have, are these things that like you could get concrete answers to fairly easily? And it's just a matter of like putting in the legwork, or do you think these are questions that are fundamentally hard to answer? These are questions that are fundamentally hard to answer because mm -hmm. getting an, uh, we don't know. The other thing is we don't know her power level. We don't know her danger level, right? And so if we get into her, If we were able to occupy her mind and she knew that if she is nefarious, she would destroy us because the most dangerous thing potentially to her is knowledge of her true intentions, right? That's mm -hmm. how we could expose her. Right. Um, but then again, she might right. be just so powerful. She doesn't give a fuck if we know what she really wants. But why is she being nice then? Is this just like a case of like you get mm. catch more flies with honey, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, mm -hmm. It is a hard question to answer. You, Paying attention and carefully seeing how she says things, what she says, and hopefully not putting yourself in a position where she's easily able to betray you for her benefit. Okay. We're going to have the same fundamental question going to August. August, um, how are you feeling about our girl, Autumn? I don't know. I feel like Autumn just wants to do experiments on interesting creatures. Hmm. I think that's just kind of where it lands. I don't think that she's some evil witch, but I also don't think that she's like necessarily some really goody two shoes. I think she's just kind of there to do stuff that interests her and that she finds interesting. Okay. Um, Arrakis, you've already expressed a little bit of your opinion on her. Is there anything mm. else you'd like to add? I just think that she's. Well, I said this in the after show last week. I think she, we were talking about her being a wizard priest. I think maybe she's a wizard druid, not a mm, wizard priest. Maybe. Um, and I think that she's given, she's reluctant to talk about some things, definitely. And I feel like the, like her mentioning Grouse from far away, I think she's told Grouse to say that. And that's why he's saying it a lot when he first, at the start of the campaign. Because she's been like, if anyone asks you where you're from, say just say you're from far away. Oh, you think that is something that he has internalized that originally came from well, her? He's not, not from far away, is he? Otherwise, how does he know forest? Mm. Or the bit we don't understand, and, and that's what makes us suspicious. Okay. Last and not least, Growl, our girl Autumn. She's trying to help you, maybe. I think it's just, it's really hard for Greg because he has such a pre-established relationship with her. Um, I mean, like, she's almost like his mom, right? In, like, a yeah. weird way. So it's, like, really hard for him to, like, be super skeptical of her. And he, mm -hmm. he like, doesn't have any, he, he doesn't, he's still a very confused bear in a very confusing mm -hmm. world. And for the most part of his like conscious life, Autumn has guided him through, so he just has built a lot of trust of, with her, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think right now he feels like this is the right path, and also he doesn't know her any different. And she's like... Like, she's not weird to him because that's just like the first person that he met, right? He doesn't have mm -hmm. the same experience as the others do with like general human population. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well then, that'll be it for now. We will be back next week with some more Saber Die Outcasts and a mule heist, which <laughs> I don't think I've ever done before. I don't think I've ever had a party steal an animal before. Nice. There we go. Amazing. All right. Bye bye. After show. Bye.